Hello, you're listening to the Eric McKenna Project. Em, I appreciate you being here, man. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Oh, just uh, no problem finding the joint? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just what are you, twenty minutes from yeah, Southside. Easy like stuff, that. right? You know, I'm in Southside, so like, I'm like, I'm like right, you know, I'm right in the middle. Of you Pittsburgh. are Southside, yeah. To me. <laughs> well, again, I thank you for doing this. A um, couple different things. Uh, first and foremost, how are you managing this pandemic? And it usually is the opening question for my recent okay. show. So just talk a little bit about what happened when you first got rumblings that there was this thing coming, and then oh my gosh, it's really here. And what what did life look like for you, and how have you managed the past year or so? Okay, um, so I'm a firefighter, uh-huh. and we're we're we are uh, EMTs. So I go to I mean I go to people's houses that have COVID, yeah, all the time. Yeah, I mean we get COVID calls all the time. So I've I really? saw it from day one. Yeah, okay. I saw the whole thing happening. I, w- I wouldn't have thought that through. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I mean I've I mean I'm 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 in the middle of it. Yeah, yeah. I'm a first responder. Yeah, right on. Yeah, right I've on. been. I, I I don't know. I mean, I'm life not, didn't change much for you. I mean, like you you also own the gym. So how how did that? How is that? So how have you folks adapted on, so, on the exercise? So last huh? April is right. when I became a a partner with uh, during, Bob, Yeah, yeah. During yeah. COVID, yeah. You took I the bought him with my partner during COVID. Yeah, he had the gym before that. Got it. And during Got COVID, it. the gym I was training people out of cut back and closed down. So I just, so I just was like, you know what? This is the perfect opportunity. I saw opportunity. Not uh, nothing, and I saw opportunity. Right. So I so I invested in the, into that gym. We built this. We built the gym up. From what it was, it was it's a hardcore boxing gym. Right. It's in Southside, the Southside Boxing Club. Right. Hardcore boxing gym. We had pros. We have amateurs. We mostly have people who just want to train like they're going to fight and be ready to fight, but they're not going to fight. Got it. And then got it, um, got it, got it. Okay. we went from there, and I got we got the we got a, a professional weight room. You know, uh, we we made everything. Uh, we got treadmill, we got stairmaster, we have um, you know thousands of pounds, dumbbells. We have a full gym now, you know. And they put this all together starting starting April first last year at the beginning of beginning COVID. of yeah beginning of COVID. Yep. So when most then, gyms were shutting down, or I was we were opening up. Yeah. Wow. So what did that look like when you? Well, first I mean, we, we followed the guidelines at first. Of you course. know, did, I would have like one person there at a time. Okay. We cut back on group on the on the on the group stuff, mm-hmm. but a few months later we were back to, you know. Yeah, and I think that was the case too for other gyms around the area, especially those that are we have mutual friends, uh, MMA fighters, and so yeah. forth. The, those those type of grappling gyms. How do you social distance in that circumstance, right? I mean, like, yeah. it's really it's really touchy. I don't know how that's even done. You well, you have to see through all that the the whole. You have to see through all the the lies of yeah, you know, right the on. whole lies of all this this is stuff. It's, yeah, it's all the um. Let, let's let's take a, a little bit of look back um for you because you are a diverse guy. Okay, involved involved in a lot. You've done a lot. Ah, uh, yeah, I, I'm involved and, in a lot. Yeah, exactly. Um. You're a lifelong Pittsburgher, am I right? Yeah, I am. Yeah, I yeah. moved away for eight you, months to one Bur- time to Berkeley. Right? I moved to Berkeley, yeah. California, <laughs> and I uh, I saw the air in my ways and came back. <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, it was a good experience getting away, though. Yeah, you right know what I mean? But you're a Carrick resident, is that right? So I'm uh, um, I'm from a place called Overbrook, which Overbrook. is okay. between Carrick and Brookline. Yeah. But the reason why I'm Carrick is because I went to Carrick. You got it. I went to Knoxville Middle School, which is like. You know, a city. I'm, I'm a city guy. I'm city school. Right. Went to Overbrook Elementary. Went to Knoxville. Knoxville. When I been in, in the mid '90s, when I was there, was a different animal. You know. Okay. It was a. It was like uh, I went there with all the Carrick people. Then I went to Carrick High School, and then after Car- after high school, I left my house at 20. And this is 18 years ago. Yeah. So I yeah. moved to Carrick. No, okay. I moved to Knoxville. Then moved to Carrick. Okay. And I've been I've been Carrick for the last most of the last 20 years. You uh. Sports from when you were young, sports were your thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I'm known for boxing, right? Uh-huh. You know. Well, I think in, in your, late, in your later years, yeah. Yeah, I uh, I learned how to box when I was a kid. My dad, my dad showed me, and um, but I didn't even have my first fight until I was uh, 23 years old. Okay. Uh, yeah, I had to lose 40. I had to lose about 40 plus 40 to 50 pounds. 
For your first fight? In a year, yeah. And I did it, and then for my first fight, yep. But you, uh, other sports, like you grew up playing baseball, football. Yeah, I, you thing. know, the, the, you know. so my, my dad was, my dad was always there for me, always, you know, provided for me. He, he, he was my, he was like my coach, you know? Right on. And, uh, yeah, I grew up, um, I played, I uh, played baseball. Obviously everyone growing up in the eighties and nineties played, Nothing played, wrong played with that. baseball, right? Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I played baseball <laughs> and then I played, uh. Then I played football. Started playing football when I was on the on the little team, you know the you know the termites. Termites. I was on the little midges, team. Whatever they call. It. Yeah, yeah, I played the, the little termites. team. Yeah, so I played for Brookline and baseball oh, for Brookline. Okay. okay. And then I played I played hockey too. I played ice hockey too. Oh yeah. I started playing ice hockey after the Penguins won. The, remember the, remember one of them cups? Yeah. Back in like ninety one ninety two. Yeah, yeah, I started playing hockey because that that kind of became a thing after the Pens had some success, right? Because yeah. it, that wasn't really a sport that. Anyone in Pittsburgh really played, right? Yeah. I mean, as a youth, youth or young person, yeah, nobody played hockey before. We, then. Right, we won those cups. <laughs> hockey blew up. You remember? See, you're a little older. Ice and Street. Yeah, well, I started. It started on the street. Yeah, because you remember yeah. back in the day, you used to have a uh, uh, snow days, and we get the, we get the nets out. We, you know what I mean? We play hockey all day. <laughs> street hockey. It started with street hockey, and then the Pens won. And then, thankfully, my my parent my, my parents were willing to provide for me to play ice hockey. Right on. Now I was like, "Where'd you play at then?" I played for Central Pittsburgh, okay. down at down at the old Neville Ice, the old oh, Neville. Oh yeah, right across the river from where we are now. Yeah, the, well, no, it was like a South Side. It was oh, in South wait Side. a second. Um, so it was like I'm thinking of the roller rink. Over it was here, up Twenty First okay. Street in South Side. Okay. okay, it's gone now. They they yeah, they, they, they got I rid remember of that, that fifteen facility. years ago. It was uh it was like penguins practice there. I remember that facility. Yeah, yeah. Um, they didn't always practice there. It was uh, it was a uh, it was rough. It was like it was um you go underneath the ice rink the the skate the locker room the locker rooms were like underneath they yeah. were like on the on the in the basement. Yeah, yeah. I grew up playing there. I played hockey for seven eight years. My last year was ninety seven ninety eight. I was a freshman for Carrick. Okay. Yeah, I played, so played there. So there was an actual hockey team at Car- at Carrick. Carrick. It was this, it was our second year. It's interesting. The first year I was in the eighth grade, they had a team. It was J- JV, and then mm-hmm. I played varsity my mm-hmm. freshman year. I got lucky. I was on. I just because I had seven, I had six, seven years of experience in hockey. You know, got it. So I did. You know, I did pretty well. You know, I, I was on a line with uh, with a senior who was like one of the best players in like Western Pennsylvania. So you had to learn quick. Well, I was, I was, <laughs> I was, I so. I, I adjusted to the tempo yeah. pretty good because that, that's what you have to adjust to when you play hockey of course. how fast of course. these guys are. Of course. I was about um and I was I had this senior in my line, so I was a good I was good at assists and, no, and not being out of position. Got it. So, you know, I I did Got it. we had a good team too. Our team was pretty good. Pl- Carrick hockey was really fun. I played one year though. Okay. And I gave it up I asked my freshman year. The uh so you were really part of that initial i don't know um proliferation of hockey in the city then and it, it yeah. was certainly spurred on by the pens right it's amazing oh, how the, the pro team yeah. can actually start a whole yeah, thing we well mario we mario of course, of and course. then it goes to yager yeah and then um paul coffee yeah and, but then paul, all those guys came yeah this is way before Sidney crosby i mean Sidney crosby oh, yeah. didn't come into Abs- in my 20s absolutely absolutely um but it was huge you know and then i got the lucky to play at carrick and central pittsburgh with a lot of Guys were really good, yeah, you know. Right on. And these the Carrick, they, they loved right hockey, man. I mean, Carrick was a good program. Yeah. I just quit in, after ninth grade because I just I don't I don't even know why I was. I well, was 14. well, hockey in general is just uh, it, it's it's in Pittsburgh. It's nuts, and it's directly I think because of the Pens. Yeah, directly. I mean, for no other reason because before the pen, Pens had any success at all, there was no hockey in Pittsburgh. Or there might have yeah. been, but you had to but, seek that out. Yeah. It was, and it was very expensive, yeah, which is still right. kind of expensive. Right. right. So my parents were willing to, ex- to spend on it. Yeah. My, my parents, we were middle class. Right we're, on. You know, right on. Like lower well, middle class. It's not cheap. It's right. It's not a cheap right. sport, especially when you have kids that so, dig it. So when, you know, we, all the kids, all, all of us from Carrick, you know who we all played with? All the kids from Upper St. Clair, uh, Mount Lebanon, well, they were doing a lot better course, than we were, right? Of course. Yeah, you, know, you know, so they could yeah. afford it. They could yeah. afford the camps. They could afford the training, the better equipment. We just barely right. scraped by. Right. You know, no, I'm, I'm, a, I'm lucky it. my parents even afford it. You know. Yeah. So, but all around, it's, you just love the athletic competition. You're, you're a very competitive person. Yeah. I can tell yeah. that too. Yeah. I, I guess you know. My competition now is as different as you get older, you know? It is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the uh, the sports and the endeavors are also changed as well, too. Yeah. Um, 
was was fighting or the boxing end of it always with you, even at a younger age? I mean, did you feel like boxing was an interest to you, or did you more develop that after? Yeah, you? I I kind of I always wanted to box. I went to the boxing gym. That it's called the it's called the it was called the Brookline Boxing Club. Right on. Yep. It was a, the the Brookline Boxing Club was it was huge. They yep. were like mm-hmm. famous all through the seventies and eighties. Yes, indeed. And one of my baseball coaches from when I was like 10, 11 years old. His name is Muscles. And then um, he was a Brookline guy. He was like a famous Brookline. You know, he was Golden Glove winner, you know, back mm-hmm. in the 70s. Mm-hmm. And he had two sons my age. And I went I went to the gym back in the 90s, but I just didn't, I did, I, you know, I just went there, play, you know, go to practice once and then not come back. Mm-hmm. And then I went there th- and then maybe, you know, this is like early 90s. Right. But I just wasn't, I wasn't ready. And then I and then I played every now and then I'd work out and do box. But my then my dad showed me how to. My dad had a my dad had a heavy bag, a speed bag, okay, okay. In, in my basement. He actually my dad actually built a whole gym in my basement. Okay. Started working me out. Now did, he he boxed. But he didn't he didn't box competitively, but he knew how to box. He's he's he from Greenfield. He, enjoyed he had it. a fight. He had a fight <laughs> coming up. You know what I mean? That's a reoccurring yeah. theme I'm hearing from yeah. my my new friends in Greenfield. That yeah, you need to know how to fight. If yeah, you're from Greenfield. Yeah, he was you know grew up in the 60s, 50s, and 60s. He had to fight. <laughs> Got it. So he showed me how to fight. Remember if you remember, so you might you should remember these. Remember those old bag gloves that were like that, that like you'd slip them on and they were like just barely bigger than your hands and they had like the metal bar in them. Yeah, I grew up. I had those and we had a heavy bag right in the middle of the okay. basement. Okay. And I would, I was, I would always practice that, but I didn't have the balls to actually go in there and compete and fight. Okay, I, you know. And then, and then, um, then my teenage years, mm-hmm. I would still go to the boxing gym here and there, but I was like a football player. Still timid though. But, yeah, I mean, I just never, just never carried through with that. Well, you weren't fighting. afraid of pain. If you're playing contact yeah. football, you yeah. were okay with with yeah. being hit. And, and in so football, forth. I was a good hitter. Yeah, just in hockey, rep- I was a decent hitter, but I, I liked to hit. Okay. But I just never see part of the part of the fighting thing is you got to remember it's it's, it's it's you're sacrificing your ego there, you know? Mm. You sacrifice you're risking it. You're sacrificing it. You're risking it. And it's more of an individual sport as opposed to obviously, you know, football is a team sport. Right. You're working in conjunction with other players to yeah. toward a goal, but you're all hanging out by yourself out Ultimately, there. it's the fighter in the ring. Yeah. See, I'm a coach now. Right. But, you know, right. so it's 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 not yeah, there's a you have a team. A boxers have a team. You you have your trainers. You have your managers. But it's all up to the boxer in the end. I mean, at the end of the day, you're in, it's just you in a ring, right? Right on. You know, right on. So I was never I was never ready to go in there and compete. I wanted to, you know, but I just never got in there and compete. Then I went to Carrick Boxing Club when it first opened. It was this was a well known club too back in like 2000, right. 2001. Right. I would do the hard workouts, but then like I just wouldn't last for too long. Okay. I was I was doing. Dumb kid stuff. But that was was stuff. this right after uh, you graduated? What year? This is, I graduated two thousand one at Carey. Yeah, so this yeah. is right around the time you graduated. Yeah, yeah. And I was I was I was a different guy then too. I was 220, 225, 230 pounds. Got it. Got so, it. Got it. Got it. So I didn't I didn't even have my first boxing match till two thousand six. Okay. I was twenty three before you know I turned twenty four that year. Okay. Um, I don't want to jump ahead that far. So we're out of school, what what was your what the hell did you want to do? Now, coming out of high school what, in your head, in your head, what did you think you? Wanted I don't know to do? what I wanted to do. I what didn't did you know. think at the time? Well, I went to college. Yeah, Indiana, went, right? Yeah, uh, no, I went to Edinburgh right out of, right out of high, right out of high school. Uh huh. I was um, I like just barely slipped by in high school too. You know, I was like, uh, you have a lot of company. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, right. But like, I went to Carrick, so like, I only went to school when I, I only went to certain classes when I wanted. Okay. I cut school a lot. I was just I had no direction. You know, obviously, right. I didn't care about grades. I think I got like a two point seven or something. Like I just barely got by, and it's because like I was I was I was cool with teachers, so they like would like let me get me get by, let me get by, put no effort into into high school, mm-hmm. and um, so I graduated. I went I actually went to Edinburgh, and I played football there for one year. Okay. I was a walk on. All right. I was the seventy. I was there was a seventy man roster. I was number seventy. Okay. Yeah, I was a fullback, and I was literally number seventy. Like, okay. I like they had no respect for me at all. I, I was like a tackling dummy. I was a tackling dummy. And this is it was your freshman. You walked my on fr- your freshman year. Yeah, I walked year. on my freshman year. Me and a friend of mine. Okay. And he was a lot better than I was. Okay. And uh, he was from Carrick. You know, he, he, he's he from Arlington. He played for Carrick. I oh, right on. He made. It. He he played for a couple of years. Actually, another friend of ours who played for Carrick. He's from Southside. Yeah. He actually had a good. He actually started for four years there. Okay. He stuck with it. I went there. Now this is this is a different world back in. Remember this is 
Yeah, this was years during nine eleven happened when I my, my freshman year of football in right college. Right you right know, on. so I remember nine eleven happened. Like yeah, I was in class. You know, yeah. I remember they turned the TVs on. It was crazy. They yeah. sent us home from class and stuff. Yeah, and um, so it was a different world back then too. It's it's why I say it's 20 that years, man. So what I did was um, I was to Edinburgh. Edinburgh was this little school. I mean, I don't know how it is now, but it was like five thousand, four thousand right. students. It was like uh, going from Carrick in a city to like there. I didn't love it, and I had friends who went to IUP, so I transferred to IUP. Okay, yeah. But you started Edinburgh. I started Edinburgh. Yeah, well, right. one semester played All football, right. but I gave it up. You know, I should have stuck with it. Looking back, I mean, okay. I don't have any regret on it, but looking back. I I didn't have the endurance, the toughness to stick to stick it out. Really? Yeah. That, that's an honest statement coming from well, a, from to, a boxer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I, I had to build that up. So uh, you you transferred IEP and yep. uh, and you graduated with a, a bachelor's. I didn't graduate in... till 2010. Okay. I graduated high school in 2001. Graduated in college 2010. Yeah. So so, so you, you didn't you didn't finish until 2010. So I went to IUP and screwed around, man. I was partying. <laughs> yeah, right. I <laughs> like okay. a lot of people. I and went you to had IUP. a lot of company. Yeah. And so I went to IUP till 2003. Just no direction. You just didn't know what the yeah. hell you wanted to yeah, do. Yeah. I don't know what I was doing, man. I was 225 pounds. I was smoking cigarettes. Yeah. I was chewing. I right was on. uh I was uh, um I I had no direction to life. No no anything, man. So then I dropped out in 03. And I left my parents' house. My dad kicked me out, which mm-hmm. was the move. I was 20 years old. He's like, you got to go, man. Best thing my dad ever did for me, man. Yeah. The the love he showed me by 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 forcing me to go out and be a man of my own. Right. So that's when I moved out. And then- um. So what life looked like for you when you, you, you were out on your own? I had a, a good friend of mine who was about five years older than me. He's still my boy now. I mean, all, you know, all my boys. Of course. From back in the day are still my boys of now. Of course. And- um, he he let me he 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 had an extra bedroom. He let me live with him. This was in you know Knoxville, two thousand three. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and then I um I just I had I had two jobs. Okay. I had a full time job, and then a part time job, and then on the side I I detailed cars. So you so obviously I had three were jobs. not afraid to hustle. Yeah, well I just that's all I. So my dad instilled in me that work ethic from very young. I okay. had my first full time job. In 2000, when I was in high school, yeah. I would I worked night shift at Toys R Us, stocking shelves, my senior year of high school. So I'd wake up at 10 o'clock at night. I actually had two jobs. I worked at Dairy Queen in Carrick. I was a Dairy Queen Carrick <laughs> guy. I was a, I was a, I was um. He was the ice cream man. I was I, well, <laughs> <laughs> ice cream man. I, you know, you know, I was I was just um, yeah. I would work at Dairy Queen, and then I worked a full time job, 40 hour a week. So I worked about fifty hours a week my senior year of high school. Right on. I mean the the, the job at the, a lot the, of hours for yeah, high school student. Yeah, I, looking back, I was crazy. I I had a full time overnight gig during high school. That's nuts. Yeah, yeah. That's nuts. Uh, yeah, I worked out with a, with a guy who's a firefighter with me now, a friend of mine now. Okay. Been friends for twenty okay. some years. He actually worked at Dairy Queen with me too. All right. Yeah. So we we always tell stories. All right. We always tell stories about like back in the day when we worked at Dairy Queen yeah. together. You know, <laughs> it's funny because I actually, come on, man. You, you the reason you worked. At, be honest with me. The reason you worked at Dairy Queen was to pick up girls. Come on, man. <laughs> come on. Well, the story is I used to tell the story was <laughs> my friends used to give give ice cream cones to, to the pretty girls to try of to get course. the girls them right. Of course, man. But it was cool. It was it was a well, it was a decent job. It was, remember this is. 2000. I started working there in 98. Yeah, right on. I started working there in 98. Yeah. You know, I'm just, so I remember, I, you know, I would give ice cream cones to the pretty girls and stuff. <laughs> but it was just a cool job because I was a social guy, you know? Sure. Yeah. So you don't I got say. A, I got a bunch of my friends' jobs there. Right on. They got their own jobs there. Yeah. We had a, we had, we had a lot of fun, too. You know, we were making $6 an hour. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah, but it goes to show you. But really, it's about the experience and the yeah. journey, right? I yeah. Mean, and you obviously, if you live that now, and in, in all the work that you've done, you've yeah. proven that out. Yeah, I, yeah, I guess my my problem is one of the problem I have. Uh huh. This is obviously I you know I I have problems. I don't talk about them very much. But one problem I have is I'm proud of my work ethic. I'm proud of working. Why is that a them. problem? Be proud of being prideful of anything is a problem. Yeah, I, I get that. I do get that. But it, but I also think that uh, that probably what drives you forward, right? It, it's it's a, one th- one thing that I've always admired at you from afar is just the tenacity and the discipline. You know, a lot of discipline. Yeah, but and, to be uh, 
prideful of discipline. Yeah, is, is I, just, I, I see the delineation yeah, between the to two. To be proud of anything, I get e- that. I'm my approach is ego is the enemy. Yeah, good book by Ryan Holiday. You read that yeah, one? Yet? I haven't read the book. I'm, yeah, I'm aware of it. it. I'm aware get of it. it. Get it? Yeah. I think I heard about it through Jocko, maybe. Yeah, Jocko. A, Bullock, yeah, yeah, Jocko's a man, right? Yeah, Ryan's a good. Ryan Holiday is a good. Um, now he's a, he's a, he's probably the modern day Stoic, and there's nothing wrong with Stoic philosophy. It's a, it's a little it's a little dark at times, okay. you know. But, uh, but, right. I, but I will tell you his his um his writing for someone of this era is pretty impressive. Okay, and that's a good book. The Ego's Enemy is a good book. So think about it like this: dark at times sounds like what a man. Should be, yeah. Right. Well, yeah, yeah, I think yeah, life that, is dark at times. Yes, that, you're right. And I think um, a good friend, Rocco Coza, we talked about here. Okay. Rocco has written has quite a few um, essays, and he has a book where he talks about uh, uh, the darkness and the light. You need both, you know. And I think oftentimes we're afraid to embrace our darkness and understand it. We want to shun it or run away from it. And he's got a really interesting essay on. I that. see where he's coming from. My approach is. I'm in the light now. I'm in the light for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. So my thing is, um, yeah, I don't know if I, you know, I don't know if I, I don't, I don't like market it, but right. I, you know, I'm a, I'm a Christian, right? And um, you know, I'm, I'm in the light now, man. Right on. The, the darkness was from before. Right on. When I was, when I was, when I wasn't following God, mm-hmm. I was following the world, mm-hmm. and that's why we look back at my, at my story. Yeah, it's a lot of inconsistencies. I would take. Three steps forward, mm-hmm. four steps back, then two I, steps forward. I think that's a the human back. experience, though, for most of us, don't you think? I think it is, but it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to. No, be, it doesn't no. have to be. And, and we, we're going to get onto your your book here in a little bit too. But so it's, it's like two thousand and I'm guessing three or four, and uh, you're you're working and you're kicking around and so forth. Were you boxing then? So I I wasn't actually. What I was doing then was I was just I had my business. Okay. So I'm an entrepreneur going back yeah. to the early '90s. Okay. You know, I started yeah, yeah. selling comic books and baseball cards. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna get right? there. Hustling want, baseball cards, comic books. We're back to that all for through sure. the early mid '90s, and then um, and then what I did was when I moved out with when I moved out, I had a, I had a full time job and then I had a part time job, and then I started detailing cars. Yeah. And then 2004 or five, I was just working my job. You know. Right. You know, I was doing I was doing I was doing pretty good for a young young younger guy. Right. And then, um, but I was, you know, I just, I was, I had this void in my life. Right. Yeah. And then through that void is, is what, is how I got to boxing. Cause okay. I lost 50 pounds for my first fight. Yeah. Let's talk about that. When you yeah. got to, you got to boxing, was it a conscious decision or is this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back and revisit this. Like, how did you get to that decision? Oh man. It's hard for me to relate to that mindset. Cause going back is like. I'm a different man now. You know, I'm in right. the light now. Back then, I was a lot. I was living in the darkness. Okay. So, I you know I I was like I was a failure as an athlete. I never really made much. You know. Okay. I was I wasn't much of a football. Player. I was like an average, slightly above average football player in high school. You know, I was um you know, you know um, I never really amounted much as an athlete. I only played one sport in high school. You know, growing up I played baseball. I played football. I played hockey. You know, and um. I reached this point when I was in my early twenties. I was like, uh, the only thing left was fighting. Okay. I like to fight. You, uh, you know, I like to. I, w- I always wanted to fight. You know, and um, that's it's happened naturally too. You know. Okay. So, what was the first step you took to to, to t- start taking it seriously? All right. First step I took. This is crazy. So I went. So this is, if you remember Station Square back in the day? Of course I do. Remember Margarita Mama's? Of course I do. Matrix and all the places? <laughs> right? You remember that, right? Shh, quit dating me. <laughs> <laughs> we remember those times. This is, this is, yes, so I this do. is 2000, 2005. Okay. I went to the Golden Gloves. A friend of mine from Brookline, uh, Mark Daly. Okay. He was a, he was a, he was a really good boxer. And um, his coach was Muscles. Who was Got who it. was my baseball coach back in you know right who, whose sons are my who are, whose sons are my age, and um, I went to his fight and he actually fought another great fighter a guy who went went real far with his with the boxing career, it was this fight the fight was at Margarita Mama's 2005 Golden Gloves, it was huge it was a crazy fight, my boy won Mark Daly won his big fight against a guy named Sammy Vasquez who right. would go on to have a great who actually would go on to have a great career okay and they had this great fight and I saw it, I was like wow I was like you know, you know when you see like the, you know, you just, 
you're just you're in. So I went up to my coach to, to, to Bob Healy, who's just like with short muscle training you know, muscles. He's my guy, man. He's um, he's uh, you know I love the dude, man. Right. He, he's actually in the, the PA Golden Gloves Hall of Fame now as Got a it. coach. Got it. He's been in boxing since the early seventies. Anyways, he um, I went to I went to the fight and I said, I'm 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 winning Golden Gloves next year. Now that's all ego because I it was all about I wanted to win the Golden Gloves. Like I'm winning Golden Gloves next year. So I went to this gym. I don't know. A month later, I was two hundred two hundred twenty some pounds, and I just started boxing. And I just, uh, you know, so you I, obviously had a drive in you. Some something was motivated inside for you to do it. Whatever it was, that's, is, a, that's a punishing thing to yeah, do. Yeah. Whatever it was is, I lost almost fifty pounds, won the Golden Gloves, and here we are, fifteen years later, talking about boxing. So, but you yeah, know what I mean, but, so that's uh, that's that was that fits from the from what I know of you that that yeah. there's the determination. Two thousand five, I had I had I had the right coach. You just made a decision, and you yeah. Did it. I remember I remember going to the gym, fifty just, pounds. Yeah, yeah, it was up two hundred plus pounds, probably two twenty to two twenty five. I went. I ended up getting down to one seventy eight, fighting one seventy eight. Mm-hmm. Then I lost more weight and then fought one sixty five. But like, I just remember going to the gym, just just you know. Fighting, just fighting my way into the gym, fighting, my, proving myself to be a fighter. Right. Yeah. I would imagine most people don't even understand what that whole uh, journey even looks like. We see it romanticized in movies and television shows. Yeah. But talk about that for a second. You just started going to the gym, and you had to fight your way. I had to fight my way in. I had to in, fight my way into just getting a coach and, to work and, with and me. Explain to me what that involves. Like you, you're fighting in the gym. You're proving yeah. yourself in the gym. Fighting so, people at, that are also members of that gym. So at our gym, Southside Boxing Club, uh, Matt Layshock, he's he he started the gym. Okay. He's the founder, and he's our head box. He's our head coach. All right. And he's my partner with owning the gym. Okay. And uh, he's uh, um. He's a great coach. And he says, on day one, you say you want to fight? We'll throw you in the ring see what you got. If you say you want to fight. Now, if you just come there and you say you want to work out and see what happens, we're not throwing you in the ring. But you come in day one, day two, we'll get your mouthpiece, throw you in the ring. You're fighting somebody. You're, you're, you're not fighting all we'll throw out. throw you to the wolves right away. We're throwing you to the wolves, yeah. yeah. That, that's his okay. approach. And that, okay. was, that, was, that, that was the approach. My gym was called South Park at South Park back in 05. Okay. They threw me in there, man. Muscles, you know, threw me in there, cause I, I wanted to, I wanted to beat people up. I wanted to, I wanted to be the man, and that obviously came with, came with immediate short term benefits, cause I made it through the tough spot, but it ended, it ended up tearing me down. It broke me down, you know. No way. Um, so many years later, I, I, you know, I had, I, I fought once a month for, almost once a month for three years. Okay. As an amateur, you know, I um. I turned pro in 2009, right? And I lost my first pro fight. I got I got TKO'd my first pro fight. I should have I I I and, you know I was the, I was there to win, right? But I ended up losing my first pro fight. So and I lost I lost lots of amateur fights too. So I, I had to go through the moments of got it. I had to, I had to I had to be humbled and humiliated to move forward. That you is know? such a recurring thing with the boxers I've had the yeah. opportunity or the fighters I've had an opportunity to talk with. It's like they have some initial success and they feel like they're on a roll and it's usually at the amateur yeah. level and then all yeah. of a sudden they take that next step and there's there's just a little bit too much confidence. Yeah. And they so, get pushed back a little bit. Right. So mine was like a series of steps. Like I, I got one of my first three fights. I knocked the guy out to win the to win the Western PA okay. Golden Gloves. I got this huge knockout, knock out cold like I was the, I was, you know, I was, I was, I was the man, you know, in my, in my head, you know. Right. And then I had the, then, then I went to say championship. I lost, but I was, you know, I was humble, but like, I wasn't humbled enough. Okay. And then I just kept fighting, you know. All I was just so driven. Right. I just right, kept right. fighting, and then I just, you know, at one point I lost four amateur fights in a row. I was okay. fighting tough fighters. I mean, I was fighting guys with. 30 50 100 fights yeah. you know yeah and um and then i, I came back from there mm-hmm. and then but it ultimately ended up me in me being humiliated by losing my first pro fight by, by getting tko'd you know mm-hmm. and that that was like that was like the moment and that, that like cut so me down it, was it a, let me ask you this did it feel like a major step to go from amateur to pro or did it just feel like another fight it was just another fight the, the guys i fought as amateurs my last 20 fights as amateur was like I mean I was fighting just fighting killers yeah. I mean I, not, maybe, maybe not every fighter was a killer 
but I was fighting guys who were open class fighters. These are the best okay. fighters around. Okay. Yeah, I was fighting a lot of really good fighters. I, mean, I was so, fight, in my sixth fight. I fought a guy with eighty plus fights. Okay. You know, I was fighting the best guys. Okay. I fought a guy who went to who went to go to the Olympics later on. You know, I was sparring Roy Jones Jr. And, yeah. When I was still an amateur. Yeah. He was world. You know, he was, he's one of the best ever. No doubt. Yeah. I, and then my coach Muscles, he got me sparring with everybody, man. He, he believed in me like you wouldn't believe, but I wasn't ready. So character wise, personally, I wasn't okay, ready. Okay. I wasn't the man I needed to be. That is such a um, a reoccurring theme that I hear, and okay. it's, but but it, to some folks, it comes off a little esoteric. They, it, it mean they may have a hard time gra- wrapping their arms around that. Yeah. When you say you weren't ready, talk about the mental and the and the and the spiritual, the, the the essence of being a boxer, which is separate from the s- physical skill level. Am I right? Yeah, those are separate things. Yeah, the the discipline. The di- I mean, it's the discipline, right? And you you have to be uh, willing willing to endure things, you know, willing to endure the the long hours training, the 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 weeks of not eating what you want, you know, keeping your weight down. Um, and so pain, living, living right? the life, yeah, the pain. I had so many broken noses, you know. Um, the but but really for real for me, I was I I grew out of that that physical stuff. I got my nose broke so many times. You know, I I was just for for me it was really the my ego, okay. my, my ego got destroyed with that first pro loss. I should have bounced back and fought a few months later, which which muscles was all about having me do. Okay, but I was weak, and because I was weak, it took me years to overcome that. Emotionally weak. I don't know about emotionally, just something. You know. Okay. You're right. The, a, man, a man needs to overcome his emotions. I didn't overcome my emotions at that point. So I guess I was emotionally weak. I was emotional. No man should be emotional. Right. So, right. Especially so, not a fighter, right? Yeah. Well, so I fought with emotion too. You know, a guy hits me, that gets me going. I'm ready to go. Mm-hmm. You know, and then I just, you know, look, looking back now, you know, I'm I'm thankful to God mm-hmm. for for. For, for for all that man because mm-hmm. I needed to lose yeah humility is an amazing thing yeah. in the human experience yeah. and the sooner you embrace the concept of humility I believe the, the, the easier or more smoothly your life will transpire the problem is the ego is pulling against that humility or yeah. crushing that humility internally all the time or trying to yeah and I think that's but, but I, I can't imagine fighters fascinate me because I can't imagine number one taking that kind of abuse and then responding or trying to respond and then falling down or getting having a setback and then getting back up up for more abuse so there's so, something very so unique do, with fighters there don't so you, you think do, so you do it systematically okay what do you mean this is why I give credit to muscles my coach okay. I mean my muscles I mean um my my fights in the gym that that don't go on my record that no one ever that that, that there's no video mm-hmm. even even back when I fought there is no there was no video of thirty yeah. some fights there's right, no video right, you know right, what I mean right, right. um there's no video it doesn't go on your record but that's where you build it it's, it's training so you're 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 you're, make, you're doing it you're building yourself up you don't just come out there and and you know just go in there and fight right like, you, you fight in the gym right you know. Your, some of your toughest battles you probably or had in the gym, in the yeah. gym that yeah. are yeah. absolutely absolutely no doubt about that every not a, maybe not, i would say i would say every fighter you've had here has had way harder fights in 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 the gym that's what i've heard right than they than, than they have in the real fight yeah now i now i never had no great real fight you know, i've only i fought low level pro and mm-hmm. you know amateurs they they're all short fights but so I never really had that big pro fight, you know. I, I didn't go very far. I didn't go far at all with my pro, my pro career. But it, you know, in the gym, I mean, I was in there. With, I've been in there with two world champions, number of number of guys who went around the world, well known boxers, right? You know, so I, you know, I didn't go to war with any of those guys, but I went to war with the lower level guys because that's how it goes. When you when you when you when you're in there with the the best guys, it's yeah. not at that level. You're yeah. there, you're there working. It's more controlled. Yeah. But when you're you know, just fighting, the, is there is there something visceral about going into a 
fight with a crowd or with uh, the formalities as opposed to just going at it in the gym is there oh, yeah. something yeah is that a, is that a mind is that a mind screw sometimes so, f- so i yeah so my best performances are all in the gym sparring when, when there's not people watching it's a recurring right? theme i hear yeah yeah, so you know, I, I you could say my be, I've sparred better than I fought, but I was always inconsistent as a fighter, anyways. You know, I would have I would be great for I would, I would be great. You know, that's never great, but I would but I would be my personal best. Yeah, be sharp. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. sharp is what you want to be as a fighter. I'd be real sharp. Yeah. One 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 day, and then a week later, I wouldn't be sharp at all. You know. Yeah. I, sharp is sharp is there's something to being sharp is what every fighter wants to be. Interesting. Okay. I've so had... you be sharp. I could be sharp one week, and then three days later, I'm not sharp at all. You know? Yeah. And is there really no way to predict that either? Like, I've heard other fighters say um, they, you know, everybody has their own rituals or their one, uh, I can't remember which fighter told me, but they went in so ready, so prepared, and then got fixated on something in the arena that bothered them. It was... Oh, they're uh, distracted. They're distracted, or they were counting their counting their steps into the. They were trying to just ease their mind. They started yeah. counting their steps yeah, into the ring. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. They that, got fixated on things that were completely irrelevant. Yeah, well, these are stressful situations. Fighting, right, I, right? I, I can't imagine. Yeah, when you start fighting like guys who really know how to fight, when you first start boxing, your first couple of fights, you're fighting guys who never fought before either. You know what I mean? They might have one yeah. or two fights. Yeah, yeah. They don't really know what they're doing. No one knows what they're doing for the first couple of fights. They're just in there winging it. You know what I mean? If you if you hold no it together, knows, no one knows what they're doing in there. They're just going at it. Right? They don't. Right? It's crazy because you're struggling to get that composure. Yeah. You're struggling to yeah, do what I you. Bet. I bet. You, to do what your coach drills you to do. Got it. And that's what I think we offer at my gym is we we get guys ready to fight. Okay. Like they're gonna, they're like, like they're gonna perform the same way. Okay. And if I don't have confidence, you're gonna perform the same way. You're just not gonna, uh, you're just not gonna fight. Okay. Because there's no emotions in fighting. When did you make the decision that you did not want to fight professionally anymore, but you're fat, you love, you love the art of fighting, and you wanted to go into coaching and, and and obviously fitness training and so forth. We'll get there. But when did you make that decision? That, you know what? I'm done on it, the professional. It kind of happened naturally. My last, my last, um sanctioned fight i've had five unsanctioned fights okay since then and, you know they, they they you know so they're, they're a different animal because I've, I've done I try to explain amateur. okay so explain to the the audience here the difference between sanctioned and unsanctioned so unsanctioned fights are exhibitions with with uh, with other fighters okay it, you know on on an amateur card or on a pro card okay but it's just an exhibition so we wear okay. bigger gloves we we might wear headgear might not but you know there's no, there's no judges. It's just a three rounder. You know, it's just a couple. Can they be more brutal? I've heard those. My things. last fight was my last fight was. Um, they can be more brutal. My last unsanctioned fight was with a, uh, with was with a, a super like a super tough fighter. Okay. And I say tough. He's very tough. He's skilled. He's a uh, excellent fighter. He was he fought in UFC. Okay. In Mark Cherico. Okay. Me and him had a me and him had a I had a very spirited exhibition. Okay. It was an excellent fight. You know, he probably he he edged me in that one. It was like a close. It was like I won the first round, he won the second round, then he right won on. the third round. It was, it was close. It was a great fight, and um, but no one got hurt. We had sixteen ounce gloves on, you know, and we just did it for the love of the fighting, right. you know. Right. I don't get me wrong. We both tried to win, of course. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can't go into a fight without. I mean, that, that can, that's the thing about fighters. The competitive nature is so strong in what you do. It has yeah. to be there, right? I mean, you are trying to. You're well, trying to win. Yeah, but with exhibitions, with the with the unsanctioned fights, I've had unsanctioned fights there. But I'm not like trying to win. I'm just trying to like put on put, put on a decent show. Okay. I'm not worried about winning because you know because there really isn't. I get it. There's not really an official winner. I get and, it. Um, I get it. You're I'm, not out there to hurt anybody. Yeah, I don't want to hurt nobody. You know, right. there's the you know, so it's it's unsanctioned. Yeah. Yeah. So what's this your is a different ball game? To, what when you when you first watched MMA. I mean, because you're coming at it from box. When I you love fir- it, yeah. When you first watched it become a thing and cage fighting, and I'm guessing that happened when you were a kid because I, think, I want to say it was the mid-90s when you yeah, fr- I didn't pay UFC attention. started yeah. to, to proliferate, I think. I, yeah, those fights with the, with the Gracies, they'd yeah. come and they'd, you know, they, they, yeah. they, they, they'd roll with guys and yeah. the guys throwing punches. What did you think of that? I didn't really pay attention to that very much. Okay. I don't, I, looking back, I don't know what I thought of that stuff. I don't okay. know. I mean, I liked it. I like all fighting. Okay. But MMA really came up big from like mid two thousands, right? 
2005, 2007 to, to now. You know? Okay, what did you think of that when you when you, when you started to take hold, being that you're an upright boxer? What did you think of the whole MMA thing? I love it. Yeah. Is yeah. it you were ever tempted to do that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, but I just I just didn't. You just I, didn't yeah, go that direction. Yeah, I just didn't go that direction. Yeah. The gra- to, so the I grappling thought, thing never interests you at all. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but I just, you know, I, I don't have a wrestling background. I wrestled okay. one year in middle it school. Is, it rec- and, that's ob- and that really kind of is required to, to compete at, at a decent level. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you definitely, you definitely want to get your grappling, you know. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess I'm a boxing guy, but like, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I just never, never, never want to do MMA. You know, I got, got you know, my, my, my. My partner at the Southside Boxing Club, he's an MMA coach. Right on. I mean, he's he's a fighting coach. He's a boxing coach. Got it. But he has he, he we both train a lot of guys who are fight in Bellator and UFC. Oh, right on. Maybe not UFC, but Bellator. Yeah. They, you know, they fight MMA. Mm-hmm. Pro, you know, amateur. Mm-hmm. And then I have another friend of mine who's coach who coaches guys in the UFC. Got it. You know. Yeah, and we have some mutual friends as well too. Yeah, you know, Chris Dempsey and, and yeah, Chris Dempsey's and a man. Con yeah. Worthy and so forth. Con Worthy's a man. Yeah. I sparred him yeah. last year. Yeah, right on. Yeah, right on. See, it's a small, it's a small circle there, isn't yeah. it? Definitely yeah, definitely a small circle. Uh, I want to talk about fitness for you, um, and you penned a book that is available on Amazon, by the way. Congratulations, you are an author. My I friend. am. I am you an author. An author. Yeah. Um, it, 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 it's vitality. What's what's pursuing the word? Pursuing vitality. Pursuing. It's per, the pursuit of is it per, the pursuit of it's vitality or pursuing? Pursuing because you're yeah. always pursuing. Does that make sense? Yes. That's how I guess kind of that title. Yes. And, so, and, and you're a big positive. You're a big positivity guy. You think I so? Think, I think I think from our limited time together, okay. um, I tend to believe that I kinda am too. Okay. Um, so I want to talk to you about the decision to write. Okay. Um, I know in that book you mentioned the importance of journaling, uh, right? And, so, and so, 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 so it's want to talk about how that, how that, how you integrate that in your own life. Too, so that's, I'm a big journaler as right, well. It's tracking. Yeah. It's it's getting to know yourself. Okay. Which is, which is really what you, which is like a huge. It's obviously a huge thing in life. Mm-hmm. So it's spiritually, it's huge, but mm-hmm. but physically and mentally, it's huge too. Getting to know yourself, and yeah. th- you can get to know yourself through journaling. No doubt. And that's keeping track of what you're doing. So, so when it comes to exercise and, and diet specifically, mm-hmm. it keep it, it keeps when you journal, you're also more responsible, right? Because you know you you know you're going to own up to it, right? Well, you have to take yeah. ownership for it. There's a record. There's of accountability, it. right? Right. So these are the things that they get they that that give people the results and give them the purpose to it. You know. Okay. And so so journaling is huge. Um. But, I mean, what I, was the decision I, to write the book? Like, where did that come from? Did you just wake up one day and say, "I think I'm going to put all these great ideas I have together in my life experiences and put them down"? Yeah, I, I wanted to write a book forever. I wanted to write a book. I started writing that book, so I published it on Amazon in 2014. Right, and then I really, really put put it put it out there in like 2015. My book. Okay. And um, but I really started writing in like 2008. Yeah, you know, okay. I was I was really into researching, you know, uh, health and fitness. Yeah, yeah, and um, I put a lot. Of, I put a lot of time into writing that book. Yeah, the, but it's the summary of what I learned is my experience of training as a personal as a boxer. trainer. Is no, as a personal trainer. Okay, and, I mean as box too. It all kind of comes together. But boxing as a personal is trainer, boxing is a portion of it. Then yeah, well, think about training. like this. I was a my sole source of income for like six, seven years was personal training. Got it. I was ten thousand plus hours. Wow. Yeah, I'm at the point now where I mean I'll still personal train people, but it's on my schedule. Yeah. And it's gotta be the type of people who I know are gonna fit good with me. So I Got still it. I still have clients. Got it. But I used to have sixty I used to see I used to train sixty people a week. Wow. Yeah. It, sixty sixty. A week. Yeah, half hour at a time, half hour at a time. A week. A lot of them were an hour, half I mean I was it was it was I did that for years. Wow. I well, yeah. Yeah, I can't I can't believe how much I personal train. That's man. a lot of high, I did high so volume like... personal training. I did uh, I did high volume, but I also did. Um, I mean, it was my whole life. I was emailing people all day, texting people all mm-hmm. day. Mm-hmm. You know, I was designing programs, people. Okay, let's let's, let's, let's talk. Let's talk about that. That's okay. that's interesting. Sixty. I know people we a keep week. we keep jumping around a lot, so I, you know, I want to make sure. I want to see you're good with that. That's what we yeah. do here, buddy. Yeah, yeah, there's no agenda whatsoever. This okay. is this is really fleshing out your story and and, and getting a great conversation with you, yeah. which is what we're doing. 
60 people a week. Six Talk, people. What were some takeaways for you? What What did you learn during those those six years you were at I that was, pace? 2010 and 11, I started at a slow pace. And 11, 11, 2011 through 15. Wow. I was, you know, that's when I got, I got. Okay, talk about some ta- some takeaways, because obviously that's a lot of people every week. Yeah. And you're going to yeah. see some trends. You're going to see some behavioral patterns. I mean. Yeah, I was just driven. I was driven to have the most clients, to work the most hours. To what just, were you to seeing, to... though? What was it? When you, when you evaluated, you know, each individual person as they progress. Yeah. With you, what were some trends you saw? Like, what was mistakes or yeah. some or some positives that came out of well, that. Well, so I talk about this in my book, which is like my book is okay, you know. I wrote it 6 7 years ago, mm-hmm. so but the book is okay. Um what I saw was the people who took ownership. The people who took ownership and made it made it a purpose for them. It, it's their responsibility is working out. It's not there's there, there's there, there's they're not they're not necessarily goal driven. They're purpose driven, you know. Mm. They weren't just working out to lose twenty pounds. They were working out because it was what people do, you know. And they were owning, so they were taking ownership for who part they are. Of them. Exactly. So that's what that's what it is. But taking uh, it's, it's it's the ownership. When you get that level of ownership for who you are and what you are and everything about you, is when you exercise. You know, it just becomes what you do. Yeah. You know, if you're somebody yeah. who's trying to make the most out of your out of yourself and mm-hmm. trying to do your best, mm-hmm. you're just gonna work out. I mean, you're not going to work out like many, you know, 20 hours a week. That's right. prefer- that's for top level people. Right. But you're going to work out, you know. They made it a priority. Yeah. It, or, three, four hours a day, and on top of that, you're not just making it a priority. So there's a difference between having an exercise routine mm-hmm. and having a training regimen. Right. I was with people who who wanted to go from exercise routine, which is three times, four times a week, go to the gym, mess around, you know, maybe do an hour on a car, on a treadmill. It's a social, maybe, maybe do some social event for them. Well, I mean, they were into it for themselves, but they they, they, they didn't have it, it wasn't it wasn't systematic. So what I did was a tra- I designed training regimens. It's a systematic approach mm-hmm. to um mm-hmm. to help you one reach whatever goal you want. You, you, you know, people have little goals. Yeah, and I'm not I'm not about having goals, but I I get that people have little goals. Like they want to bench press, I don't know, 225 mm-hmm. pounds, 300 mm-hmm. pounds. Yeah, they have that goal. So I so I address that goal. But also make a comprehensive program, you know. Just because all you want to do, I guess, some meathead all wants to do is bench press three hundred pounds, which is which, 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 which. By the way, most of my people, most of my clients were just normal people who really wanted to like have be in really good shape or you know right. get the most well, out of, of their course. training. Of yeah, course. Of course. and um, so we address each goal, but everything's always everything's always um comprehensive. Mm-hmm. You know, everyone's doing what I call like the foundational movements mm-hmm. on a regular basis. Yeah, mm-hmm. every, everyone's squatting and lunging and twisting, you know, and doing um doing a uh, core work. Yeah. But like advanced core work, not like your basic crunches and, yeah. and stuff. The core has been ignored for so long, right? I mean, well, it, it not, ain't, not so much anymore, yeah, but not it, so but, much but anymore, for decades right? it was. Yeah. Yeah, well, I yeah. think so. Yeah, and, and for decades people just people didn't have the best plans, I guess. I, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah. maybe the approach of yeah, I, I, true. I think maybe there wasn't a lot of people taking the total body approach to yeah. To, well, exercise now is like it's popular. It's it's the thing. It's yeah. not the thing, but it's something everyone seems to do now. Yeah. Whereas like twenty years ago, it wasn't really the case, right? I mean, I would agree with you. Yeah, right? yeah. I think, but but I think the consumer is also a lot more confused today based upon all the nonsense that you're reading. Ain't that true, man? You know, and you yeah. have to. How, how hard is it for you when you start with a new client to unwind some of the baloney that people have ingested, reading and hearing and right. fads? So unlearning. You got you got to do it. It's, unlearning. Yeah, it's, yeah, 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 it's a, a good way of, of putting uh, it. A Sam. degree of unlearning. Yeah, um, it's a good way of putting it. Yeah. Um, or isn't there much of that? I don't know. I'm asking. Uh, so I haven't really taken on too many new clients. And if I do, they're usually boxing. So it's so, so, so I'm like I'm but like prior a, though when you first yeah. started. I mean, was there a lot of folks that yeah. were just twisted up with weird diets and So yeah, so what I always do is I I I get together. The first thing I got to do is we got to we got to we got to take the ownership for it. So okay. you so you have to just start putting the effort in, right? Right. I'm not even worried. Uh, you know, the you just start with just basically getting to the gym 4 or 5 days a week. Make it make a routine. Got it. As you make routine, then we'll get make a training regimen. 
and then, and then and then the training regimen is and always. You want to see it first if they show up consistently. Yeah, for absolutely. Four or five yeah, days, right. Because I'm at the point now where I, you know I'm not even looking for new clients. If they come to me, they come to me. Yeah, but I, you know I don't. But I don't, you don't have I, time to waste on someone that's not dedicated. I don't want to say waste. I never waste time. Yeah. But I want to say spend this. time is spent. Well, my my time now is a lot more valuable now than my time was ten years ago. Got it. Right. You Got know. It. So my, my own personal time value is huge. Got it. And even over my my course of training people. You know, I still train people now that I, that I trained ten years ago. Wow! Yeah, yeah. That's a testament to they're pretty. They're obviously happy. Well, it's a testament to them sticking to it, mm -hmm. it's te and, and and it says, I guess, something about they're finding value yeah, in working with some, you. Finding value in in some way in working with me. Yeah, yeah. But no those are, those are the type of clients I want. Right. They're in. You know, my, right. you know, you know, my clients are in. Ten yeah. years. My my ten year, you know, she's in. You know what I mean? She's a lifelong. So that's you know, credit to her. You know what's interesting to me too? And she doesn't train with just me. People who are in for that long, for for the lifetime, they train with different people. Got it. I have I have a coach too. Of course. You know, every coaches have coaches. Of course. So when you when you're in for ten years, you're in for life, and so you have a you have a whole yeah. different. It's 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 a, it's a different animal. There, yeah. I mean, what's fascinating to me is there is something about the element of boxing slash fighting that, I, and I don't think it's keyed entirely on violence, but there's just something about it, the human experience when they start getting the bodies in motion and they start working out or they're using weights or they're or they're moving, the, going to the sparring is like almost natural like there's, i would say most people have an inclination to do or, or or do something similar whether it's shadow boxing whether it's um i don't know workout classes that involve some kind of boxing yeah. seems to be part of that am i missing it is that my wrong what you're saying is is boxing is a fundamental fighting is a fundamental human thing is that what you're saying it appears to to be absolutely to it me. is it appears absolutely to is. me absolutely it is yeah fundamental yeah primal yeah primal that's a good way to put it yeah i mean i mean we live in a soft society now where people can grow up and not even have to fight you know mm -hmm. you know and then people who do it, it's just oh we live in yeah, a very soft society very soft society no that's a different topic for but a different conversation no, no but it's yeah. no we, we can touch on it i i, I believe you're 100 percent correct yeah i got to the point where i was at one point in my career where I wasn't training any fighters, so, you know, I wasn't, I, I was, I was fighting up until four years ago. Okay. Yeah. And then even two years ago, I had my last unsanctioned fight. Right on. Right, right? on. Right. So I've only really, really, I mean, I, I coached my first competitive fighter 10 years ago. Okay. The Golden Gloves 2010, you know? Okay. He went and won his first fight, lost second fight. Right on. My first ever guy I coached. And then, but I wasn't really focused on coaching fighters. I was focused on coaching people who wanted to use boxing you, you know what i mean it's just part of their workout program because they it. like the idea of it got it because got it yeah so i was i used to the big difference there yeah and that, that's cool so i would train regular people like they're gonna fight you know what i mean right you gotta punch punch move punch right, punch move right, get right. defend get defend counter punch you know got it the footwork so i do yeah. I, I train regular people like they're gonna fight got it yeah yeah, that's it, a different. That's a different way to go. Yeah. Well, I, they're they're not just. I'm not just holding pads. They're not just punching things. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Like like, that's something. I, I was, you know, that's something I'm just not interested in. Right. Well, you're a purist. I mean, you're a boxer. You are a boxer, so it yeah. has to be tough. I'm for you. not a pure boxer though. Like, yeah. What, like, what do you mean by that? So if well, I say so a purist, I guess I have a stigma as a boxer. A stigma. I mean, okay. I, something is where I'm just. I'm, a, I'm like a brawler. Yeah. You're a brawler. I'm a brawler, yeah. So, okay, yeah. help me out. What's the difference between so a brawling brawler is, and a boxer? So brawling to the naked eye or to the guys with a lot of ego, who it's looked at as, it's looked at as a lower form of skill, hmm. okay. but, which it's not true. Whereas the guys who, who stick and move, play mm -hmm. defense, circle around the ring, move a lot, that they're considered to be more skilled boxers because it's more of a boxing purist, right? Okay. Their, you know, their style was being a boxer. My okay. style was being a brawler. Now I so did both. So you were though. more on the attack as opposed to the avoided. As, as, as avoid. I as I moved on and got better and see how things worked. Okay. Right, but it, it it's still a high level of skill to do that. Not that I was a high level of skill. I wasn't because I fought a low. I was a low level pro. But it takes it takes skill. Okay. To to, to be a brawler, what be to be huh. to to be to brawl at a higher level. The brawler means you're more on the aggressive. Yeah. 
yeah. as opposed to, unless on the defensive, and yeah. boxing has a, a large amount of avoidance there and then calculated striking, right? Yeah. Kind of? Calculated striking, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well, so everyone has a different style. Okay. Have you heard the term styles make fights? No, I yeah, haven't. So what, styles so make fights. So help me out there. So every boxer has a different style. Okay. So you got, look like this. You see Mike Tyson, right? Yes. Mike Tyson's style is- He um, wants to kill somebody when he goes in the ring. Right, right. He's throwing punches with bad intentions. He's coming forward. So is that He's a head movement. I don't want to call him a brawler. I don't want to, cause just because just I, I don't want to devalue it. Because he, Mike Tyson's a student of the game. Okay. He's an all-time great. Yeah. Right? But look at his style. Now look at, now look at, now look at, um, Tyson Fury. You know Tyson Fury is yeah, right now? Yeah. Look at Tyson Fury's style. Yeah. You now he sticks, he moves, he's yeah. all around the ring, he's he's using head movement. You know, he's man, Tyson Fury's excellent. Yeah. But he's also a foot taller than, than Mike Tyson. Right on. And fifty pounds heavier. Yeah. Maybe not fifty pounds, but twenty, thirty pounds yeah. heavier, you know? Yeah. There's different styles. So their style matchup is huge. Okay. You, you know. So okay. styles make fights. Like so Mayweather. You, Mayweather in his May, division. Look at Mayweather. He, he's a dancer, right? I mean he's well, I, 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 I wouldn't I call know. him a dancer. I think, I think Mayweather's Mayweather's one of the he's an all time great. He's a just doesn't top, take any clean hits. No top one can twenty really fighter in history. No one can yeah, but him. at that level, those guys shouldn't shouldn't take that many clean hits. Mm -hmm. You know, if you if you fight at a, at the world class level, a twelve rounder, you shouldn't take that many clean mm -hmm. hits. And don't get me wrong; some some box matches turn into just all out fights right. at the high level. But right. you shouldn't you shouldn't be taking a lot of clean shots. And when you get to that level of of of, of boxing and fighting, there's, there's not that many clean shots to be had. You, got, you know you have to work your ass off just to land a, to land a clean shot on somebody. Got it. You know. Got it. And maybe there's a whole different level. These guys are at such high levels. But maybe look look maybe the style. Mm -hmm. And then think of uh, think of Mike Tyson's style. Yeah. Obviously, different weight class, but pound for pound yeah. wise, think of their styles. Right. Totally different. Totally different, right? Totally different. So, but styles make fights. Look at Manny Pacquiao. You see mm -hmm. him, a different style, mm -hmm. right? His style is, is obviously led to have a. He's yeah. been a ball, he's been a pro yeah. boxer for twenty five years. Wow, it's incredible, right? It's a long May, time. Mayweather, Mayweather's been pro boxer for twenty five years too, probably close to that. You know, that's hard to imagine. Yeah, it's been that long. Yeah, and but this it's the styles. And it's funny you said styles, and the first thing that comes to mind for me was um, growing up watching uh, Hagler. And uh, look at uh, Ray Sheer Ray. Sure, Leonard, look at Hagler Leonard, versus Leonard, right? It's yeah, a famous it, fight. And that, famous two my matchup completely styles. Completely different styles. So actually, so Hagler's an all time great, one of the best ever. No doubt. You know, he just, he just loved, passed away. Loved rest in guy. peace. Loved him. Well, loved watching Leonard. him fight. Sheer Leonard, all time great. These are two of the best ever, right? These are top, mm -hmm. top, they had different top styles, twenty, though, right? totally different styles. Yeah. First of all, Hagler was a lefty, mm -hmm. and Hagler Hagler was so skilled. That he he fell in love with his skill in the fight against Leonard. That's why he lost that fight because mm -hmm. he wanted to outbox the boxer, right? Which he did okay, but you don't outbox a boxer. You you grind out. You you brawl with a boxer. He didn't he didn't push that fight enough. That's why he lost that fight against Leonard. And whereas Leonard 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 will brawl with you though. Mm -hmm. You know I don't know if you yeah, see he'll, you he'll know, go yeah he'll go to Leonard it. It, it forced he will do it. Le Leonard Leonard Sir Leonard was a was a boxer puncher. He was a stick move, but he he had enough power. He set down the shots. He could he could he could brawl you off of him. I mean, he you know he beat he lost the first fight to Duran. Mm -hmm. Learned what he needed to do because mm -hmm. he got he got he got beat he got beat up by a brawler. Adjusted and then out out boxed him, out punched him, out brawled him yeah. in, the, in the rematch. Yeah, and then so like, he adapted. But look at different styles. Look at look at Duran style. Yeah, look at yeah. look at look at Leonard style. Yeah. Look at Hagler's style. Look at look at look at Floyd Mayweather's style. Look at Tyson Fury's style. Mm -hmm. Look at Mike Tyson's style. Mm -hmm. All those different, wildly different styles. So what we do at my, my Southside Boxing Club, what I do as a coach, is to give to give people this to help people develop the styles that's the right style for them. It matches their mentality, right. their approach to fighting. Right. It matches their person. It, it always matches their me mentality, their personality. Got it. You know, but it also matches their skill set too. You know, if you're six, if you're six foot, one hundred and forty seven pounds, mm -hmm. I don't want to turn you into some <laughs> some brawler. I want to turn you into a boxer, boxer mover, right? No, that makes sense, right? And if that you're a le sense. you know, if you're a lefty, I'm gonna train you a different way. No, so that that's, makes sense. That's that's what sets me apart as a trainer is that I develop you based on your style. Okay. Whereas you know, my style is totally different than all the guys who ever trained. Got it. As far as Got I, you know, as far as I can see it. So you know, it's not a one shoe fits everyone, you know, as kind, a, kind of mentality. As a boxing coach, so some boxing coaches have a system, 
Okay. Everyone goes into their system. Okay. You right? Right. And they design everyone to be the same. Okay. They, they, their system. They do? Yeah. Well, some guys do, yeah, especially as amateurs. Okay. They design a system. All right. And then the, their fighters all do the same system. And then and then um, they try to build guys to similar styles, but fighters create their own style at some point, right? Right. And so what, what, what I do is what sets us apart at Southside Boxing Club, and especially I pick this up from Matt Layshock, you know, my partner the the gym, is really um, really refining each person's style. Okay. Yeah. And, okay. and building their own style and building their own system they have. Got right? It. So for tactics got and it. strategy. Got it. So you got tactics, fundamentals, you get boxing fundamentals, which yeah. is the, basically the same, right? Yeah, so yeah, you yeah. put your hands back yeah. fast, to turn your hips into your punches. And then you have tactics, which is tactics is how you land punches and then how you defend punches okay. and then how you move around. Okay. Then there's strategy, which is the overall application of tactics and fundamentals Together. in terms of winning a fight. Hmm. So this, this you see the level we're talking about this this is this is a more advanced level of stuff. There's no question. This isn't go to the gym and just punch punch yeah, there's, pads. There's no right? question. Yeah. Don't get me wrong though. I'm I'm that coach. You got you got to get in. You got to fight. You got to fucking fight. Yeah. I'm no, sorry. Yeah, I, mean, I don't mean to use that for it. I don't know what you're, you can do that here. Yeah. We're not regulated. You can say anything okay. you want. No, no yeah. worries. But I'm more of the dig down and fight guy. You know, I'm I'm big on fundamentals. You can go out there and you can go out there and have a great career just by having fundamentals. And, yeah, I get you it. know, I get it. Yeah, I get it. I mean, I don't know about great career, but you have a good. Any, any. I'm at the point where I think anyone who has has the right the right um, mentality and approach to it mm -hmm. can have a decent career. Okay. Uh, or even good career. Okay. If they if they really study, get the right fundamentals. Okay. They overcome the obstacles in the gym, because you're gonna you're gonna you know you got to fight your way out of the gym. You got to earn your way into a fight. Mm -hmm. You got to manage your weight. You know, you, there's a lot of stuff going it, on. It seems so incredibly difficult of an endeavor. It is. Yeah, and it is. I and mean, the, the it, average person doesn't even, unless they really see over a period of time how hard it is for someone to do. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, um, yeah, and one thing I want to, want to, want to, want to, want you want to point out is I didn't, I never got very far. I was just fighting four rounders. I had eight pro fights. Whereas I learned a lot from a lot of these guys who did go far, right. you know. Um, you mentioned uh, Ed Lattimore. Uh, Ed Lattimore, uh, Ed Lattimore. he went very far, right? Oh, yeah, Chris Dempsey. You know, Chris Dempsey went very far. He's mm -hmm. a he's a world champion jiu jitsu guy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you that the level on that is that he's a world class, right? Um, come worthy. He's oh, fighting yeah. UFC. He's fighting the best fighters in the world. Right, you know, Ed Lattimore was. Yeah. I think he was fourteen and one as a as yeah. a pro boxer. Ed something else. And then he went to another level with his with his with his. He's a professional. Oh, with his life. He's, he's a professional. He's a, he's a speaker. He's yeah, a writer. He's an author. He's a professional yeah. chess he's player. He's truly an influential figure. Yes. Yeah, he's right. A, he is an influential, well spoken, um, intellect intellectual yeah. person. Well, he offers value. He offers, he offers value. value. I follow him on Twitter. I follow him on well, Twitter. Ed main Lattimore thing. definitely is a gentleman who offers value. Yeah, and, no he, and he's a great dude. He comes to my gym. He comes to the Boxing Club. He'll spar our guys. Man, he couldn't ask for a better dude, man. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, no doubt Because that's what happened to him. So you were like a sponge. Up you were just learning. You just learned everything you could get your hands on. I, I guess I, yeah, I just, I just picked it up. Mm -hmm. I've learned a lot more. Now that I've humbled myself uh -huh. than I ever did when I had that hardened that, mentality. That humility yeah. is an amazing yeah. thing, isn't it? Well, I had learned. I had to, you know, I had to learn humility through many losses, through I get many it. setbacks. I get it, and they're all created by myself. Don't be wrong. You're gonna. I lost some because I just fought better guys. Yeah, but I lost some just because I didn't have my shit, my own shit together. I get it completely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, can we talk in generalities about fitness for people? Uh, I know right now the pandemic has been. Um, how do I say this? I don't think the pandemic necessarily has been hard on people's waistlines. I think their approach to the pandemic you for a so? lot of people. I think so. I think the choice, I think in the end, we're all responsible for the choices we make, so me I, included. Yeah, you're right, right. And I just think that uh, some people have often to deal with the pandemic stress with booze and food. You have as, they? As a, okay. Uh, I think so. I, th I, I don't know. I, I think, I think. Uh, from what I visually make a lump okay. assumption, and then from the, the information that I read, so I see it the other uh, way. I see gyms crushing. I see, I see, 
I see gyms crushing. I see people mm-hmm. who are getting after it. Yeah, I see people home workouts. I see field workouts. I see outside workouts. I hope you're I see, right. I, all, I, all I see is crushing. I also see liquor sales through the roof. Do you? I see, okay, I, so I, I don't know. I don't yeah. know. I, I hope you're yeah, right. I, don't I hope know. what you're saying, what you're seeing is right. Yeah. But let's just assume for sake of conversation that there's people out there that have let themselves go during this pandemic. And now that we're hopefully coming out of hopefully, it. Hopefully they weren't scared. Whatever that means. Hopefully, they, we, weren't, we, hopefully we, they weren't we living hope, in fear. We hope I know not. a lot of people live in fear. Yeah. Yeah. I hope that that's coming, that that's changing. But they're ready to make changes. Let's just say on their diet alone. Yeah. Let's, 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 we'll, put the, we'll put the exercise portion away. So the, some say this. You said change that alone? That's That's... Super important, man. Extremely yeah. important. Would you agree? I mean, well, that's the number one well, thing I would is say, what you eat and what you right. don't, don't eat. But it's a product of having a, a, a you gotta you gotta make a commitment. So in my book, Let's I wrote this before, mm-hmm. be before I was a Christian like I am now. Right. But even then, I saw it as a spiritual thing. Mm-hmm. You gotta take responsibility for yourself. And, and you know, you can do all the exercise you want, but if you're eating like a maniac, it's only gonna get you so far. Why do you think we do that as humans? Why do you think that we have a hard time taking personal ownership of? And I think I see it trending in society worse and worse now. We just don't seem to be wanting to take ownership in our own circumstance. Okay, I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, hundred percent. I know. This, I know this is true. Okay. You either follow God or you follow the world, mm-hmm. and the world is going to destroy you some way. Mm-hmm. And the distractions, it's just you're following the world. You're gonna end up eating all the eating all the crap, <laughs> doing doing all the all, taking all the the drugs, doing the medicines they want you to take. Oh, the, the, the world is the world is truly crazy. Well, the world is crazy. The world is truly crazy. And the world the yeah. world also is dictating on a regular basis and and confusing the public in regards to what they should ingest, what they should, what the exercises they should do. To take this diet pill as a this diet yeah. pill or this protein shake, to this protein shake, and that's what I, you know. Um, I, I think it's popular right now for um, people to become influencers, where they're yeah, they're, right. they're they're subscribing to you know, this nutri nutritional bar. And, and believe me, I'm a capitalist. I'm fine with you so, doing whatever you so want to do. You that's fine. Yeah, it's just a little. It makes the, I think it makes the market even more confusing for people who generally want to. So let me tell you, it changes. I made the mistakes myself. I was a vegetarian vegan for years back. Were I, you? Yeah. When I quit, when I when I lost, I lost, I lost my first two pro box matches. Okay. And then and then I was like, in a, I sent off in a, sp, a, 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 a tailspin. Okay. And I was still looking to be hell. I don't know what I was doing. Looking back. Okay. But I was, I couldn't discern the information well. I okay. couldn't discern. Right. You know, I didn't have the wait and see attitude. This thing, a big thing I talk about. You want an immediate fix. I just, you just gotta have a wait and see attitude about about all things in life. Okay. About dealing with people, about how to handle people, how to handle situations, how to handle information. Have wait and see attitude. So I, I read about, you know, I read about, you know, eating real food. Right. You know, avoiding the processed food. I always, right. knew, I always knew processed food was was, of course. was was rubbish. Of course. You know, I, I, you know, so. But that takes work. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I I was always by I doing work was no problem. You I know, think for most people it is though. Is Sam, it? Yeah, I think so. You think so? I think so. I th- I, you, You're willing to give people a little more credit probably than I think that they're what I'm yeah. observing at the moment. Yeah, so. maybe. Okay. But I, it's definitely if you want to do it right, and obviously yeah. you understand how to do it right, it does take work. It takes effort. I should say, let's yeah. say effort, yeah. not work. Yeah, effort, effort. Yeah, effort. Yeah, I. I, I don't know I, I, to a certain, a certain degree I'm, I'm out of touch with the world because mm-hmm. I don't have I don't have I don't have cable or nothing in, in my house or yeah nothing, right I, I only I watch I only watch TV at work you're right on I have I I don't know I am only in contact with people I talk to you know I, I, I think the the picture I'm trying to paint is that social media is where most people are ingesting their news and their interactions unfortunately okay. yeah. TV plays a part of it I think with commercials and so forth I just think there's a lot of information out there on the, on the nutritional side on the exercise thing yeah. from that can be possibly placed in the category of gimmicks oh, it's yeah. always been there all right? Yeah, right go back 30 years there was the half an hour infomercials on television selling this yeah. or that and so i think there's still a lot of confusion and would you not agree people oftentimes look for the quick fix yeah yeah and i never i never look for the quick fix 
I just that was that wasn't my personal thing. I was always against the quick fix. I always okay. knew better. Okay. But I got like I just I, I yeah. People do look for the quick fix. That that is a that is a product of not taking ownership, right? That's bad. That's Okay, so There's someone no comes there. to you, okay, so you, um, let's just say you decided to take on another client. The client comes to you, there was a referral and sounds like an interesting person and you, you have it in your schedule. Okay, I'll take you. If this client wants to do Thursdays once a week at 6.30 or twice a week, Thursdays and Saturdays, okay. I'll take them. So now you have this new okay. fictitious, we're going to we're gonna walk this through. Yeah, okay, got you. Fictional client, fictional client. Um, so let's just say they're 50 pounds overweight. And, and okay. they and I know you're not into goals, but they say, "Listen, I want to be a 190, and I'm 240." Now. Right, and I get that. I'm yeah. 240. I 190 is the number I just chose in my mind that I want to be yeah. at in a year. So help me get my life, get my blood pressure down. Besides the exercise discipline and regimen, you're going to work with them, provide for them. What what are your? How much of the nutritional part do you talk to them about? Do you help them with? Um. I don't get too much into that anymore. Okay. You know, I I try to get people to keep it real simple. Okay. The discipline is simple, right? You know, uh, you know, meat, meat, chicken, beef, fish, okay. eggs, seafood, and and rice, like twice a day. You know, maybe throw some potatoes in there, but make make you gotta take you gotta make food yourself. A lot of, a lot of people don't want to prepare their own food. That's huge, right? Of but, course, we eat right. out more than imaginable. Yeah, or they just, they're just, people are just lazy. Mm -hmm. They they, they just want to throw something in a microwave real fast, which is fine. You can microwave rice. But I thought we we would keep it super simple for two weeks. If they can't do that, I can't really. So you give them two weeks to correct their diet. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't want to say correct because that's that's a bold term. But just to change. Just just to take the first step, which is to eat, to eat, to eat a, to eat a, to eat a protein in rice three times a day. And that's it. For like, it's a for big, like, it's a big like change. Two weeks for, for some guy that's probably eating Big Macs twice a day, yeah, right? Or one, twice a week, or yeah. whatever pizzas. And so all the that bonus stuff. is we're, we're cutting out all we're cutting out all the processed food. We're cutting out all the bread, and, and the other thing is, um, you know, you're cutting out whatever's irritating the people. But it, it really, but really, it's it's really a personality and emotional, emotional, spiritual thing. Mm-hmm. They're just not taking care. A lot of people just aren't interested in taking care of themselves. But or if they, they are, but they're coming to you and they want to do it. They're earnest and they yeah. want to do it. Okay, and they and they say, hey, "What what the hell? What should I eat, Sam?" Keep I don't it know simple. What Keep it simple for two weeks, and then get back to me. And you're gonna eat just just meat, some sort of you know chicken, beef. That's a hard rice. decision for a lot and, of people. And, and rice. He might have had a pizza right. the night before and four beers. Yeah, yeah, right. You know, I, those people probably aren't gonna come to me, right? Because. Just, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not looking for anybody. You know, no, man, no, I whoever, know. whoever trains know, with me, I'm just saying, with me for uh, five, ten years, someone who comes to me, it's probably not gonna be that guy. But if it is that guy, it's the same deal. You give me two weeks of discipline, I will see where you're at. And see if you can do it. Yeah, I mean, if, and I, if you and want and to do it. What I do, I say, take, give a journal. Hold on, I've had people do this over the last couple of years, and they just never come back. Right. Right. Or right. they do come back and without the journal. I, I mean, I was just, I'm a, I only, I'm a, my time is so valuable. Right. And I say that in a sense that, like, I, I personally value my Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Right? I do as so well. So I, you know, it's for me, it's not about the money now, mm-hmm. you know? It's, 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 this is just a, mm-hmm. this is just my second job, mm-hmm. training people, you know? So you want that immediate, um, I want, you look, you have action to Action on di- their behalf. Discipline and consistency for two weeks. Discipline yeah. and consistency. If they can't do weeks. that, then they're not going to be willing to buy in any further. Yeah. Well, th- I mean, th- they can train with me here and there, you know, you know. But like, how far are you really going to get with taking control of your health and wellness mm-hmm. and fitness mm-hmm. if you can't do two weeks yeah. of three meals a day with you know five? You could, you could do four or five meals. I mean, I mean right. just just keep it just keep it meat 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 or eggs or seafood and rice. For like three, five, three to five meals a day, super simple. We're cutting out the gluten. Right. If you know, right. we're, we're cutting out, we're cutting out all the processed shit. We're cut, you know. I if you if you really if 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 I think you need it, maybe throw orange juice. I, I would say I always say throw orange juice in there with breakfast. Okay. To, you know, for the vitamin C. I'm always about I'm always about keeping carbs up high. I'm always about keeping protein super high. Mm-hmm. You know, watching mm-hmm. the watching the uh, 
the the man made fats, the, yeah. the the polyunsaturated fats. Right, right. Those are probably the biggest. That's probably the biggest key is keeping the polyunsaturated the fats. Processed foods. Processed foods in general, yeah. Yeah. But like, you don't have to like cut all that out. Like you know, I still eat those. What do they call it? Uh, Fit Crunch bars and yeah. stuff. Yeah, I still eat yeah. that stuff. Well, everything in moderation, right? I, mean, I don't know about everything in moderation. I would say, I don't. I, I'm not a fan of that. Okay. Yeah. Well, you're singing my song because I am. Uh, I am not about everything in moderation. If I want to cut something out of my life, it's yeah. not, I will cut it out and I will not look back. Yeah, everything in moderation so, is like one of those like buzz but terms. It seems to be people believe that. I mean, they really believe that concept. And I think it's. Do they? I don't know if they I, even do. I'll tell you what's tough, Sam. To me, it seems like. So, so just so I give some context to this, what I have felt over the past six or seven months has been really odd. So. I decided at the beginning of COVID I was going to shed the weight and okay. quit drinking. So um, you're you're this is this is this is a ago. newfound version of yourself yeah. right now that I'm yeah. meeting. A, okay. year, a year ago I okay. was I was considerably heavier than I am right 30 now. Thirty pounds. I'll keep going. That's a lot of weight in one year. Tr- uh, you're sixty plus. You're a different man. Uh, yeah, I just yeah. I feel differently now. But I will tell you um, the reason I bring that up in context of our conversation is. The um, it's astounding how everybody thinks I'm sick. That's a whole different ball game. Well, part of that is because you're I gonna get. You, I look what? different. I mean, I get that, but and I'm older, so I'm more wrinkly now. Right. Guess, a lot but, of people just a lot of people just spin everything negatively. I think, oh yeah, are you on drugs? It's a, well, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a right. part of it, but that's yeah, that's right. not really for this conversation. I'm not worried okay. about that. That's kind of almost laughable. Yeah. Right. The issue that I have is that it was not hard now what i'm saying to you is i made a decision that alcohol you know a couple beers once or twice a week is not serving me well i let me see if i can just quit it it's gonna bother me if i quit it well it didn't bother me good but i really concentrated on the food thing i just need to eat right and and change everything i was just dismiss all bad food dismiss it and then, no, no. and then putting ninety minutes a night in of walking. I, I walk ninety That's minutes huge. a night of extreme, at extremely good clip, almost to the point of jogging, but just not, just under the threshold. You're walking of running. at 4.0. four point oh, four point nine, four point oh, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah, and that's consistent for a ninety minute clip. Nice. So not on a treadmill. That's organic walking out on the street. So my point to you is that that's a contributor as well. I get it. I'm willing to put the time in. You're going to if you do those things, it's going to happen for you. It's a pretty mm-hmm. simple equation. If you do the stuff, things will change. Absolutely. So um I don't think about it until it's brought up to me. Someone will invariably bring it up and that's fine. But it's amazing how uh, they ask me what I eat. And I share the things I don't eat, Sam. And, but it's amazing how people will say the following: "Oh, I could never give up my bread. Oh, I could yeah. never give up my yeah. Miller Lite. Or I could never give up my pizza. Oh my gosh, I I have to have a steak on Thursday. Thursday's my steak night. Okay. Or I'm not giving up my wine. I'm not That's telling fine. them to do anything. Yeah, I'm just telling they're them. They're offering what, they you. Me they're what, offering you a piece they of asked, unsolicited they asked opinion me about. Yeah, right. What I did, and as soon as I tell them what I yeah. did, then they they're not attacking it. They're they're defending their own behavior in some yeah. weird yeah. kind I went, of. I've been through. I've been it's through all nuts. that. Yeah, it's the yeah. point where it, it was driving me crazy for a while. Now I just really? laugh. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it was I, driving me nuts because I, I was, went through all that. I was uh, getting yeah. it constantly, like you know, well, you know, I, I, you know, I'm eating, I'm, I'm, I'm healthy, I'm good, I'm fine. I, this was intentional. Yeah. The weight loss, I'm not sick. The weight loss was intentional. I'm yeah. trying to get my stuff together so I can have a better, more productive life. And, and because my schedule is so, as we talked off camera, very diverse and full, at the age I'm at, I need to make sure I have enough energy. To get to the things I'm trying to do, yeah. that always doesn't always work. But I'm hey, trying. You got 30 more good years, right? I'm hoping. You got 30 more good years. Well, my my point is, people are over um, estimating how difficult it was. Yeah. I made a decision. Absolutely. I just did it, so I don't look at it as being difficult. I don't find, I don't find any. Um, I don't find the decision to change my eating pattern or my exercise pattern, my re- I don't or creating that regimen. I don't find that hard. It's just a change, and I'm fascinated by how folks are 
they actually admit they can't do it. They're not they admit they're, they can't do it. They're so resistant to it. They're against it. It's, I, I, don't, it's I, don't, I don't understand. It, it's not hard. I'm telling you what I did yeah. was not rocket science. Yeah. It was, I just made a different choice. Yeah. They can do that. A lot. There's people doing it way more successful than me. I, I just, it worked for me. Yeah. You asked, I told you. It doesn't stop there though. It's amazing. The commentary is un. Believable, yeah, yeah. And I eventually now I I got, I got to the point where I had to just say, look, it's great. I hope it works out for you, and just move on because I don't know. I mean, I, so you that's my whiny little two minutes no, of, of, no, of bullshit. You, but that's it. You're in the best place. That's the best. That's the best place. I, it doesn't feel like the that's best it. place. That's, trust it me, doesn't that's feel like that's it, the at best times place. it doesn't feel like the best place. It yeah. doesn't. Well, dealing with people is, you know, that is, man. Yeah, I yeah. do it for a living, and I get yeah. it. But man, it's almost like you know, when you tell me you wanted me to tell you the secret, and I say I tell you there isn't any secret. This is what I did, you know, over a course over a course of time. That's what happened, and then you start telling me that you can't do this and you can't yeah. give up this and you can't. Well, then I, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, that, that that's on you. They're just not there. Yeah, most people aren't. That's fine. I guess. Yeah. What's the secret? Discipline, consistency, and endurance. And, but this is that's the secret, right? But, but all that can look it. differently for other people. Yeah. They don't have to do my thing. Yeah. They can do their thing, right? It yeah. doesn't have to look like what I did. Yeah. Do something else, but just do something, right? Well, yeah. There's a lot of different ways, but there's of fundamentals. Course. There's fundamentals, and you had the fundamentals of discipline. Consistency. It's not diff. I don't find it difficult. I, I shame myself for not for letting myself get so out of shape. I should have made yeah. these changes prior. Yeah, right. I just I lazy laziness. Yeah. I'm not paying attention. Right. It mm -hmm. isn't that I I willfully well, ate that pizza. One thing about it is the world you know. is so hard to overcome. The world, the temptations, the mm -hmm. distractions are everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's set up like that on purpose. But yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's set up for you to be fat, lazy, mm -hmm. stupid. It really is. Yeah. And, yeah. and it, but to oversee part of this show was the curious brain, right? I just, you know, I wanted another activity that enriched my life to some degree that involved interacting with other people. This was a great, but sitting down with you, getting, forming the bond, learning more about you, ingesting this conversation, that's part of the tapestry of what I'm trying to build for the rest of my life. It goes hand in hand with changing my state. Yeah, you know, that my, my just changing who I am as a person, so I can have more energy and be more productive and so forth. But I don't understand that concept of just wasting away on a couch or wasting away doing nothing. I television is you can't you just insane to me. I would never sit down and watch television. You can't, can't do it. You, well, you can't relate to that now. So I never could that part. Yeah. Of it, I never could the, the yeah. diet and all this is relatively new. Yeah, but it, but the wasting. I didn't have the energy, Sam, for the lifestyle I wanted, and then that's yeah. when, when COVID started. I'm like, look, I've got to get my crap together. Right. So this was this was the final piece, I think, for me. You know, and I, and it, but it was a problem. I solved it. I don't walk around and say, "Hey, look at me." I don't talk about it at all until someone brings it to me yeah. and makes it an issue. And, it, and initially, it sucked because everybody was, you know, you're sick, you're sick, you're sick, you're sick. I'm not sick. Mm -hmm. I'm great. Why? Do, why do they have to spin it negatively? I don't know. I guess I'm asking well, you for the answer there. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I'll tell you one thing. I, I don't care what people think or say or do. I just, yeah, I'm, I have, I'm at that point. I have no care. Yeah. I'm care. not offended. It, get, it got annoying after a while. Yeah. Though. You know, it gets annoying. Like, you know, yeah. come on. Because I, I feel bad. I know that some mm -hmm. people really want to make changes. They say they really want to make changes. But you really don't want to make a change if you never do it. Yeah. I, well, right. It, right. Well, so my attitude was my attitude now is people if you're suffering I'm not going to get in the way of your suffering that's the wrong thing to do okay suffering is a gift mm -hmm. suffering is a gift from mm -hmm. God mm -hmm. God allows you to suffer mm -hmm. you have to learn from that and you either turn to to God mm -hmm. and you can and with, with, in our context here mm -hmm. you turning to you can turn to taking care of yourself towards towards doing something to move forward right or you just stay in your suffering yeah but i'm not going to interfere with that cuz yeah. helping people is not a selfish move for me you know yeah helping people is just you know i don't want you a lot of people interfere with other people's suffering 
Uh, that's a very let, good way let of putting people it. Suffer. That's a very good. So those people are it. suffering, and they're, they're telling you, "Are you on drugs? Are you this? Oh my god, I would <laughs> never give it all, man. Oh my god, I would never give up my my French fries and my, <laughs> my, my Big Macs." But that they're suffering in their own way. That's fine. I, I guess. When I was younger, and my ego was 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 controlling all the show, I used to always I used to mentally spar with these people, try yeah. to try to motivate them. And it, you know, it might work yeah. one out of a hundred times, but like really. Yeah. I, my 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 attitude now is I know the truth. The truth is to not interfere with people's suffering. They have to they have to come out of it on their own. Yeah. And yeah. my my goal now is to, is my my goal. The thing now is people to find God. Yeah. But just what you're saying is let's do something to move forward. I right? think so. Yeah. I think so. Let's do something to move forward. But well, I guess maybe on a rudimentary level. I don't view what I did as difficult. Yeah. I love Good. that ninety minutes a night. Yeah. I put an audio book on. I just yeah. new podcast. Yeah. I I, did, I cannot I, wait till like ten o'clock, eleven o'clock yeah. tonight when I go out and do my ninety minutes because that's Beautiful. my time. So I I do a similar thing. I love it. I've I've embraced it. Mm -hmm. It used to be hard back whenever when you, when you're when you're overwhelmed with stress or say something you're not Early in the mindset. Early on, it was I couldn't do ninety minutes. I could only do an hour, like Wait, forty and, minutes. And maybe. you and you probably had to talk yourself into doing it because oh, I got and this I was and walking this. Walking slower, Sam. I got shit to do. <laughs> back well, then, you know yeah. your next step is. What I would have you do is your is your um is a is a is a, is a, tra is a personal trainer. Uh -huh. You ready for this move? This is this is a huge move. Here we go. He's doing it on camera. So right. go ahead. Weighted vest. Yeah, someone else told me yeah. that too. Get an adjust weighted vest. Get like so. I, I, I have like a forty pound idea. adjustable. I like that. So is that, you is that can the adjust. lightest? Is that the lightest you can buy? Well, no, well, it's adjustable. It's adjustable. <laughs> okay. So you start at twenty. Okay. Then twenty five. Then thirty. Then thirty five. Then forty. Will that build the core? I have clients doing that right now. By the way. Will that build the core? Um, I mean, yeah, yeah. Because remember this: you're standing up with twenty, forty pounds on you, right? Um, yeah. So, okay. Well, you know yeah. what? You try, I'm going to start with 20. Yep. I'm going to start with 20. I'm going to go by a weighted and vest then do that to start for a couple with 20. Weeks, then go with 25. The reason why I say adjustable is because you always want to you always want to give progress, right? Of course. Right? We of love course. people. We love progress. We love to see progress. So you get an adjustable, 20 to 40. You know, I have a few. I actually one of my clients bar one. He he walks all the time. He's up to 40 pounds now. Wow, he's 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 older than you too. He's ten years older than you. Oh, awesome. And he I'm walks up, now. He's shamed me. Into yeah, I yeah, right. Do it now. <laughs> right. But he but he did that on his own at the start of this. At the what do they call this thing? The pandemic. The yeah, pandemic. Like, what do they call it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the pandemic guy. I, I don't buy into this whole thing at all. But um, yeah, weight vest is your next move, and then okay. of course hills. Yeah. No, so so that's good. That's a good point. Hills. Um, yeah. So the the. Course that I'm on, and I do the same course every night. So there are rolling hills. There nice. enough, but That's enough. Good. But there is. They're there, but there's nothing really any substantial. And I and I can change the pattern if I want to do yeah. that. But I think that the vest thing is interesting. Maybe I'll do uh, that vest, for a couple the months. Vest is where it's at. Maybe then, incorporate, then I can incorporate changing the pattern and put some hills in there. Which is it's it's it's, it's amazing because I I'm not a I'm not a Fitbit junkie. I only use the Fitbit for that walk. I don't wear it during the day, but I put it on so I can see. Track. Yeah, I want to yeah. see what my pace is. I, I want to see the distance. The distance is generally the same because I don't stop until I complete my. So when I get yeah. with all people, you always got to track. Track and journal. Yeah. And a journal is how you keep track of tracking, 100%. right? 100%. So, so you have the Fitbit that tracks what you do. Write that in your journal every night. I do. That, that brings accountability too. Accountability, ownership, tracking—it all works well, together. It's it's and it also for me in some corny corny what a word in well, some corny way uh, it makes it exciting. You want to you see if you can beat that time. Yep. What did I? And yet one week I was yep. slightly off my prior week total. And again, it's the distance is the same. It's yeah. the pace. Wait till right? you get the weight of Vestin. Uh, I'm gonna be you, dying. You're, 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 you're gonna you're, you're gonna you're gonna do it slowly. You're gonna be at a whole new level in a few months. What well, you know, else is nice? You're coinciding. I'm gonna do this. I'm you're, doing this. You're coinciding with April, May, June, yeah, July, August, coming. September. Yeah. By September, October, if you stick with it, and I'll 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 I'll, I'll check well, back with you. We're gonna be in touch. I'll check no, back with I'm you to, no to, to, to hold you accountable. Please do. And also to maybe give you a little bit of direction. So and then um. Please but do. By September, October, you're gonna be a whole different. When you take, you be a whole different guy. Well, not whatever guy, but you'll be at a whole different level with I would your imagine walking. when you whole take that off and you're done after 90 minutes taking that off, it's going to be like, holy yeah, smokes. Right. And then, right. then what you'll do is you'll look back on your tracking 
And then you'll, you know, and then you'll look back what you were doing September 2021, September 2020, I mean. You look back here and you're like, wow, man. Because then, then you'll take your vest off and you'll do what you used to do. It'll be so much easier. You'll be yeah. so much better with it. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yep. It, it's funny. When I started, I was, I was so out of shape. I went down to the Montour Trail. But I did the same thing. I put the Fitbit on when I left. And yeah. some, when I started, it was like 35 minutes, 40 minutes. And I was like 3.1 3.2. I, mean, I just couldn't go any faster. I was so out of shape. You were, you were jogging. I was walking. You were walking? Okay. Yeah. But okay. That's how slow. I couldn't even get past 3.1 for like 35 minutes. I was as f- oh, So what, point, I'm, what oh, I'm trying okay. to tell people 3. is- 3.1 miles per hour. Uh, uh, point, yes. Okay. Yes. So I'm at 3.9 right now. It's the fastest I can walk. That's Sometimes nice walk. four. Sometimes four for that's a short a nice period walk. of time. Montour Trail is great, by the way. Yeah, but yeah. I, that's what I was doing to start. What I'm trying to say is for people that asked me what I did to start, that's what I did. And you know what? It was embarrassing to me personally. Yeah, right. It was humbling right. how out of shape I was. Right. But you know what? I knew it was temporary. Of course, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to fix this. I'm going to do the following things, keep a journal, track my movements, and put a plan together yep. to change, to have this uh, as part of my transformation it wasn't hard nothing about what i did i found hard i don't find not eat not consuming milk products because they don't agree with me i don't find that hard if it makes me feel lousy why the hell would i eat it if somebody has a gluten intolerance for wheat and 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 it makes them feel lousy why would they complain about not being able to eat it i've been dealing with people like this for a long time it's crazy well they, they get addicted to their suffering people people they get addicted to their suffering they can't get over that first level. You're 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 on like level four. I don't know how many levels there are, but you're okay. way past level one. Okay. These people are on level one. So like, if you can't get past level one, you know, there the, p- people do get get addicted to their suffering, okay. or they get addicted to, the, to their habits, and their habits are obviously bad, right? Okay. But you can get addicted to good habits too. Well, sure. They get addicted of course. To bad habits. Of course. Yeah, they get it. But people, people, some people love their suffering. I don't know about love, but they, they get they, they get, get into it. Yeah, they, it. yeah they, then they're just change is hard, man. Change is hard. Yeah, yeah. oh yeah, I yeah. felt plenty of hard change in my life too, and I failed at change a billion times. I just didn't find this. This was, um, I, I just didn't find it difficult, Sam. I didn't mm. find it yeah, difficult right. to make a decision, especially when you see things working. Like that should be the ultimate. Um, encourager when you see things working just keep doing it yeah do it more yeah right i mean so i guess that was my point is do you when you were training people like how do you help if you can help somebody overcome their own defeatist attitude is it even possible yeah i mean i've done it plenty of times uh, yeah yeah but you can't you can't do it for them they have to come to you you know what i mean yeah they have have to they have to they have to want it. Like I said about suffering, you know, mm-hmm. I don't want to ever interrupt someone's suffering. That's a very- I've done that gonna, before in my I'm life. ponder that all day it's, today. It's it, a well, good statement. That's a Christian thing. You, yeah, you don't want I get it. Suffering. Where a lot, I get where it. a lot of Christians are God, God have it wrong and they try to interrupt people's suffering, but let, let, let them suffer. You either come to it on your own yeah. or you don't. Yeah. Either way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah either yeah, way, yeah. I don't care. Yeah. You know what I mean? Talk I mean, to talk to me a little bit. Um, as I, I definitely want to touch on this before before we wrap up here today. Talk to me about your decision to become a firefighter and what that means. Okay, to you. um, you're in man, the city of Pittsburgh, right? Yeah, city of Pittsburgh. I've you're, been a you're, you're fire, full, full be, time firefighter. Yeah, uh, I I started June 2015. Okay, coming out of being a full time personal trainer for six years before that. Yeah, right. That that's a complete change. I mean, a lot of physical activity, obviously, in a yeah. firefighter. You, your physical. Uh, Regimen's important for what you do, but that's a different. I take that seriously. Field, right? I take I take my I take my. I've my, seen my some of the videos. videos. Yeah. I know you take. Hey, it you seriously. saw the videos. Yeah. I know you take it seriously. Yeah. So yeah. I, I put the videos out. I put the videos out because I I own a well, gym. I know. Yeah, what, what, yeah. What, But what was the decision to, to do that? Like, why a firefighter? Uh well, number one, I, I looked at it. Well, first of all, it's it's a it's it's an honorable job, right? Not, not that any job is dishonorable. Well, some jobs are dishonorable, but you know what I mean, like few. Yeah, a few, a few, right? But it's a, it's an honorable job. It's a, you know, um, but it offered me just a, a, a stable career. Okay. Being a personal trainer is not a stable career. Got it. One week I train sixty, seventy different people. I train for sixty, sixty hours, seventy yeah, hours. Yeah. One week I train for forty hours. Right. You know, because right. people, it's just, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not just consistent. not a good, it's, it's not. 
a, it's not the career move for Got me. It. No, Maybe I get it's a career it. move for other people, absolutely. I get it. Yeah. I get it. What do you love about being a firefighter? Um, I, I, you know, I love, uh, I love working with, working with the guys, mm-hmm. you know, um, I just love the job in general, okay. you know, um, you know, it, there's, there's a degree of excitement to it. You know, I've had, well, certainly, yeah, I've had a good, good, I've had a good, good, good number of fires over the last five years. Right. Yeah. Right. And, um, you get to feel like you're, 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 you're doing something inherently good mm-hmm. you know you're you're you know you're 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 part of something bigger than yourself does that make sense for the greater good yeah well i don't the, the greater good's dangerous term but if, but, if but used incorrectly something bigger the, than yourself not in the context yeah. that i'm, I'm yeah, using yeah right here. right right but for me yeah, something bigger than myself you know like last night we you know you get cpr you, you know you you know same people's lives mm-hmm. you know it's mm-hmm. it's it's cool then mm-hmm. we, we we do a lot of we do it. We do a lot of nonsense calls, you know. <laughs> I yeah. bet. I bet. Yeah, we, you but know, it comes with the job, though, right? It comes with the job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's 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 really a great career. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and the um, you know, it offers everything I could want. So I'm actually I'm genuinely helping people. Yeah. Right. You know, I'm working alongside other men, men mm-hmm. and women. You know, I'm working alongside good people. Right. Like there's so many, so many. The the good ever everyone everyone's yeah. mo- not well, it all has people. Has to be crazy camaraderie there. That yeah, has to be. the camaraderie, and you're working with people who are, um, you know, they're 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 there for the right reasons. Yeah, you know, I bet. I yeah, bet. it's a really good job. It's I'm I'm blessed with it. It it it, it, prov- it allows me to provide for myself too. And no doubt. Whereas training was like, personal training is as a full time career for me it wasn't it wasn't the move. Got it. Now, now that I have a, you know, now that I have a gym now, mm-hmm. it's a lot better now. I can imagine. Yeah. And I'm able to step away. I train seven, eight hours a week now. Got it. You know, as opposed to sixty or eighty. As opposed to sixty, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, you can't. I couldn't do eighty. Whew. I could do. 50, I could, I, 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 I can't would, imagine. I was steady around fifty, fifty or sixty. But like, wow. that's you, a lot. Yeah, it was. It was a lot. You know, and um, are these in a half an hour, hour increments? When I did that, I worked at a place, and you've you've heard of Bakery Square in Pittsburgh. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I worked at the Urban Active. Oh yeah, right on. Yeah, yeah. Right I on. worked there. That's where I started, and then then that became LA Fitness. Yep. I was there for four years. Yep. Yeah, they, and they were half hour in, half hour sessions, but some some people would buy two and they do an hour. You know. Got it. And but what you do there is like you ma- you basically manage your own clients, your own schedule and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I made the most out of that, but it, it just it grinded me down. You know. Wow. What's yeah. what's been the biggest takeaway or the biggest surprise of, of being a, of a, a part owner of a gym or yeah you, you are an owner but you have, you a have partner right yeah yeah part owner yeah, yeah um it's just there's just always there's always stuff I think here's for a gym like what do you mean there's always stuff breaking there's always stuff <laughs> need, needs needs fixed there's just the wear and tear uh-huh. you know the, so when you get fifty people all fifty of those people every yeah. one of those people I know right. I know and I trust them. Every, every, every one of those fifty people, I know and I trust. I get it. I'm happy they're a part of the gym. I get it. If I let the, the, they come, they come use the gym every week. Fifty, fifty plus people a week come into the gym. Okay. Right. Um, shit just breaks. You know what I mean? <laughs> you can't take it personal. Shit just shit breaks. just breaks. <laughs> shit just breaks. Shit gets dirty. It's not that people are like breaking shit on purpose. They're not telling yeah, you. Yeah. It's not that they're making things dirty and not clean, cleaning up after themselves. Right. It's just the nature of people. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So shit gets dirty. Right. Shit breaks. Shit needs done. People have problems. People get hit. People, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's the ongoing thing. And yeah. I, I, it fits me good. A lot though. of activity. Yeah. And the, the, the dealing with people fits me. Like, oh, I certainly. like it. You know, certainly. I also got 50 some people who I'm, I'm on, you know. These are these are these are good people too, right, you know. Right. But the nature of the game is shit breaks, shit goes wrong. People have people. There's always problems come up. Got you it. Know? Got it. Got it. But got it. they take care of themselves, so yeah. I'm, you know, there's no stress there. You know, I'm not stressed out at all. No, you don't yeah. seem you don't seem stressed yeah. out. It yeah. seems like a man who's just yeah. who's, who's, who's unusually calm with yourself. I commend you. C- with calm, that. calm, calm will be good. Yeah. A lot of people would say I'm a high strung because I was more high strung in my past. Okay. Yeah. You don't come across as being high strung. Yeah, to I me. can relate to that now. Yeah. Yeah. My attitude now is wait and see on everything. <laughs> yeah. Wait and see, but also at the same time, get my shit done. 
I'm gonna yeah. get shit. I'm gonna get shit done. Yeah. Oh yeah. That, that's actually one of the podcasts that you were on. I just um. Oh, you listen to that one? I listen to. That. I listen okay. To that I can get my hands on, buddy. Yeah. yeah. And you ended it. That was your. Uh, I guess the gentleman asked you for a takeaway. And you were just like, well, I, th- I think my mantra really now is to get shit done. Yeah. To get, so it's that, that's still my mantra. Get shit done, but have wait and see attitude on dealing with people, dealing with things, mm-hmm. handling things. Mm-hmm. Get shit done, but have wait and see attitude. It kind of comes across maybe as one no, of those things. They're congruent, I think. They, they, really, they really are congruent. I think they're You're congruent. Right. Yeah. yeah. You take, you gotta look at the context of it all. But it well, makes, you have to, So the it reason why sense. I say the wait and see attitude is so you don't get overreactions. Yeah. So you don't get them. So they don't happen. So you don't create them yourself. Overreactions are killing people. No, they're it, cool, right. man. I see it at work. We come yeah. I see it. We get fires. We get fires all the time. We yeah. get emergencies. We get overdoses. We get deaths. Yeah. You know, we get people in serious problems. Mm-hmm. We, I see people overreacting all the time. And as firefighters, we have to be. We have to be. We have to stay the same you know what I mean stay the course stay the course right and just do our job and stay focused through all the distractions I think also what's hurting the human race is the lack of impulse control I think you think our, so I think our jails um, are are not full but they're a portion of our I, our, in, our inmates have impulse control and I, I agree with that uh, but I, I know why I know why mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know uh, people are um, well, temptation to but, the world yeah, yeah, and the people, they're not following God. They're mm-hmm. following the world, and mm-hmm. the world will lead you all types of crazy mm-hmm. places, man. Mm-hmm. Different ways. It breaks different people different ways. No doubt. Yeah. Did you have fun, man? Yeah, yeah, thank you for having me. And I'll cool. tell you what. Thank you for coming yeah, here. No, you, you, it means you, you, a lot. I would love to have you back. Yeah, you're, love you're, to have you back. you're very interesting. I appreciate it, you know. Well, I didn't. Uh, I wanted to share a little bit of my story on this weight loss thing because um, you can, you know, you can as a personal trainer, you can relate to that. And I wanted to give you some of the feedback that I've gotten from other people because it's been, it isn't, it's just annoying. It, it isn't like I'm, a, I'm offended by nothing. Yeah, but right. I, but good, I, good. I, yeah, I don't. Well, we live in the offensive times. Everyone's offended by everything now. I could care. Look, yeah. You, 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 somebody can annoy me if they get in my face and say things that are ridiculous. That'll annoy me, and I'll move yeah. away. But I. I'm unoffendable. That's what I used good, to tell people. Good. I, yeah, I mean, it's it's. I would. The moment I become offended, that means that I've given your opinion validity, and that's just not going to happen. You, well, you know what that tells. <laughs> you know what that tells me. It's not going to happen. You know what that tells me. Mm. You don't take things personal. No. And that's that's no. that's that's a huge part of life. I think so. And by the time you get, you know, into your forties, old age must have done that. Yeah. To me, right, well, by the time you get in your forties, you you stop taking things personal. I hope. I would some hope people, so. Some people double down on it. A lot of people double down on it. Yeah, it's a tough way to yeah. live. Yeah. It's a very tough way yeah, to live. Yeah, I, like, I, I take nothing personal. I have no anger p- with people. Yeah. I, I have no anger. It's not worth it. I have no anger. Yeah. So I, you know, so I disagree with people all the time. Of course. I'm in the middle of disagreements all the time with people and handling people, but because, but because I don't take things personal and I don't yeah. have the anger... People can sense it. You know, I, I feel you're, like they can without thinking about it. But yeah, they you're can not sense internalizing it. it. Yeah. yeah. I'm also, um, in many instances, too, I'll share this with you, uh, on subjects that I have chosen not to be very informed on or I haven't had the ability to obtain information on, if asked about that subject, I'm very indifferent. Nice. And that indifference yeah. uh, offends people. Because I don't have an opinion on things, and you should have an opinion on things. And I'm like, I know I, why. I know I why. Just but I know why they think you should. I just don't I, care. Well, I know why they think you should, because you are more alpha, more of a leader, and they look to you for that. They look up to you. When you mm, when when people look up to people, way. when people look up to people, they expect them to have all the answers to have everything together. And that's mm-hmm. why having that's why having a degree of vulnerability doesn't really work for a man. A man has no, and if a man has vulnerabilities, which we all do, yeah, you don't talk about them. A man doesn't talk about his problems. Yeah, it's 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 an interesting it's an interesting theory. I also think too. I also believe that we are in a, such a polarized society where everybody's so quick to join a team. Right. I don't. Right. I don't. The, pol- the, the political things joke to me. Like I don't. Right. I you know I I am a baseball fan, so I I like the Oakland A's, and I'll root for the Pirates once in a while. Those are teams I root for. But when the game's over, and if somebody's sitting next to me that's rooting for the other team. We're probably we used we used to be sharing an alcoholic beverage and yeah. we leave the game yeah. and everybody's friends. Yeah, that's not the that's that's rooting for a team. Yeah, this rooting for a team for a Democrat, Republican, or whatever, conservative or lefty or whatever they want to label themselves as. 
I want any interest in that. I mean, because most of the people that are on those teams don't know why they yeah. are. Yeah, I see. I see all that is. You see, you're not asking me, but I'll tell uh, you I what. I don't get it. Here's how I see. You're not asking me, but I'm gonna tell you what. I see it all as a secular nonsense. Yeah, it's all nonsense. Just like yeah. all these movements created around it, secular nonsense. Yeah, to me, it's just noise. Well, and I, it's just noise. And I, I think it's all noise. I think if a human decides to be indifferent about something, that is their right to be so. You don't have to agree with their indifference or not, but you you should respect their right to be indifferent. Well, yeah. we can't do that as a society. Yeah, right. People that are indifferent on any issue, that can't be allowed. You must have an opinion. Yeah. No, I don't want to play. And that's just. That's how I try to maneuver my life. Not always easy because people don't like well, that. Well, the reason but... why people want that out of you particularly is because they look at you. They, they, they look at you as being, as being you've reached a degree of success with your life. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they they want that. They want to know what you think. That's what that's it, flattering, it, I guess. It's a good, well, degree, it's, but... It's, but that's the truth, and that's a good thing. Yeah. But it's all it just gets annoying and stuff. It you gets know? annoying. Yeah. It's, it's annoying because I, I but don't. But that's why. But that's why because they I... they look up to you like this guy is successful. Yeah. Why isn't he? Why doesn't you? Right? That's what they want. They, they, they can't. My, so my thought would be if that if that is true, and they're yearning for my opinion for whatever the reasons are, the fact that I don't have an opinion, they should maybe try to ponder that for a while as opposed to yeah. forcing me to have an opinion yeah. why ponder why i don't have an opinion on this particular matter that's that's more more of a learning tool for them than my opinion of taking a guess right because I, yeah. I would just be guessing if i had to choose a side right if, on something that i'm not versed on it'd yeah. be a guess that's the right way to be normalize not having an opinion on everything i think i think i think it was ed Lattimore uh twitter post Abs oh, normalize yes. not having an opinion I, on everything and i right? spent a lot of time yeah. on indifference and ed, yeah. ed was one of the uh, ed's first visit here many 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 months ago a year and a half ago actually uh, we talked about indifference and i was living that but didn't really know understand what i was doing and couldn't put a uh, a philosophy toward it and after talking with that i really understood what i was doing and it really cleared me up on that way of living. It really yeah. did. Ed's a, Ed's a heck of a guy. Ed brings a lot of value to he a brings, lot of people. Ed brings a lot of value, yeah, and he, you brought a lot of value to oh, me today, you. pal. And I appreciate the oh, new friendship you, here. And please, yeah. uh, please come back and see me. Absolutely. I have some other show ideas I want to talk to you about. Yeah, I'll talk about, uh, what else can I talk about? Uh, uh, we got a lot of things to yeah. talk about. I, I want to know if you will let the folks know where your gym is at and how they can get a hold of you. Yeah, um... My gym, my gym is in in, in Southside. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's called the Southside Boxing Club. It's on Bingham Street. Yeah, Bingham Street it runs behind. Uh, Everybody it runs knows parallel it, to Carson. Everybody knows. Yeah, it, our, our gym's Side. down towards Station Square. Right. It's at four hundred Bingham Street. Yep. I'm saying that no one's gonna no one's gonna write that down, but um, if you want to get hold of us, you can um. You can find me on on, Inst on Instagram. If you can't yeah. find him on Google, you're not looking Yeah, you can find enough. me on Instagram or Facebook. My name is my name is just Sam Susco on Instagram. Yep. Just Sam Susco on Facebook. The Butcher. Before you go, how did you get the nickname? It's just, it's it's a it's a it's a good nickname, right? It's a great nickname, especially yeah. for a boxer. Yeah. How'd you yeah, get it? Sam the Butcher. Come on, someone. There's well, got to so, be a story. So, There's so, got to so, be a story there, Sam. So I just we just came up. Me and my 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 manager, my, Mike McSorley. Right. He's my manager. Right. Um, when he, whenever he started getting with me, I was zero and two. Okay. But when I was done with him, I went five and one with him. Okay. As the butcher, I'm five and one as a, as a pro. Might as well plus keep I, that name. <laughs> yeah, plus I had five more, plus I had five more unsanctioned fights. So I had 10, 11 fights as the butcher. Right on. I've have done pretty well as a butcher, and um, so Sam the butcher. You ever see? So Sam the butcher. The this the 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 first part is Sam the butcher was a character on, on Brady, the Brady Bunch. Bunch. Yeah. yeah. That was Sam the Butcher. Didn't, didn't he had the hots the, for for the maid? Right? Yeah, right. Yeah, right. He had the hots for the maid, right? So that's Sam the Butcher. <laughs> that's so but, good. But you know, but remember that is this. So good. Now here's man. where now here's where I got the name from. You ready? Okay. That's like the that's like the the intro to it. The real name is the Gangs of New York. Yeah. The Butcher had the mustache. And, yeah. my, and now my mustache. Now oh, your is, mustache is, is legend. It's, it's, tri it's, it's trimmed down. Now. Trimmed yeah, down, right? Definitely. It's trimmed Did down. You have handlebars at one time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah I don't know. About, I don't know about all that handle, but I had I had a big, thick mustache. Right. And on. I was the butcher. Got it. Because I was like the butcher from Gangs New York. Got it, brother. Got now it. my mustache is a lot more, a lot more a calm, a more now. tame. Yeah. Now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. Yep. See you soon. Yes, sir. All right, friends. We are out. Hello, you're listening to the Eric McKenna Project.